Um, Secretariat, I'm not sure whether we meet the quorum or not. Can you firstly take us through on that one? How many members are here before the nomination? But um, if we meet the quorum, then I would like to nominate the acting chair. Can I first respond to your question? We've got you as Ms. Chwete, we've got Ms. Matlats, we've got Mam Matlo, we've got uh, Mam Stain, we've got Mam Brett, we've got five. Quorum is five plus one. But we do not have to take decisions in this meeting, or maybe other members will join us while we continue with the briefings. We can continue with the meeting as long as we are five. We are able to elect an acting chairperson. Thank you very much. And thank you, thank you, um, Mam Nyams. Then I would like you to elect an acting chairperson, Honorable Jibulelo Mashat. Thank you, Ms. Chete. Do we have a seconder for the nomination? Mustang? Yes, thank you. Uh, I will second that. And I, I just wanted to confirm that we don't need the quorum because we are not taking any decisions here. So um, we can proceed. Thank you. Thank you. Any further nominations, members? Must any hands up? With no further nominations, members, we can give Mema Shadzi an opportunity to take her place as an acting chairperson. Thank you. Thank you very much, Manyamza, and thank you, colleagues, um, for the word of uh, confidence. <laughs> and it, it came just as unexpected. However, thank you very much. Um, I won't make all these introductory messages and uh, opening remarks, uh, uh, colleagues, because it's a continuation of our meeting. Just to, 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 to welcome everybody into our meeting this morning and just to request that I'm um, making an apology from my side that I will not put my video on due to connectivity challenges and uh, my sincere apology. Uh, Manyamza, maybe we could get an indication if there are apologies to our meeting today, and also where are we in terms of the program? Thank you, Mamatlatsi. We've got apologies from the ministry. Mm, the minister is engaged with the ministerial duties. Metapa is unable to change her prior commitment. I don't remember getting anything from DM Scotia's office. We also have apologies from Member Bama. She's attending party activity. I received an apology from Mr. Masipa earlier on, but I, I saw him joining the, the meeting. That's all from my side. Thank you. Thank you very much, Manyamza. In, in, in as far as the program, where are we? Because it's a continuation of our meeting, isn't it? Yes, ma'am. We are receiving the entities today. The first one is ARC. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Manyamza. And uh, let me take this opportunity just to, 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 to welcome colleagues from the ARC and would we'll therefore hand over to them. If the minister is not here to make uh, maybe remarks, given that we have indicated that they have apologized, will go straight to the entity, or if DG is on the platform, to actually give a, 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 an introductory message on behalf of the entity and therefore hand over to the entity. DG? Uh, thank you very much, Honorable Chair. Um, let me just indicate that uh, the ARC is on the platform. They have got the chair of the board, uh, Majorine Isaacs, who will do the introductions, and thereafter, the ARC will take the honorable members through the uh, report. Thank you very much, Honorable Chair. 
Yeah, thank you, Gigi. Thank you very uh, much, Gigi. They can continue. Uh, thanks, Chair and Chairperson, honorable members who are present today, the DG of the department uh, and the executive from the department, fellow SOEs, boards, members who are here and management. We are here to represent the Agricultural Research Council. Uh, Chairperson, I'm Mono Mashaba. I'm the Deputy Chairperson of Council. You know, I'd like to extend the apology for our Chairperson, Ms. Joanne Isaac. Chairperson, I'm not sure if it's just on my side, but uh, I can't hear anything at the moment. Even on my side, Honourable Stain. Uh, also. Members from the ARC, the Chairperson of the Board from the ARC, we can't hear you. Can somebody from the ARC kindly uh, get in contact with the Chair just to indicate that we can't hear them? And if somebody else can take us through the presentation. Thank you. Um, good morning, uh, honorable members. I am not sure if uh, I can be heard. We can hear you. We can hear you clearly. My name is Mutabisan Mateti. I am also with the delegation as the acting CEO, and I will be taking the meeting through the presentation. I will also give the chair a call um, and just request him to um, to please um, reconnect if he has lost connection. Um, so perhaps while I do that, I, 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 I thought, let me just show my face. This is who I am. Uh, so I'm not joining the meeting as a robot. And I will then take off the camera and um, thereafter, if I can be given a few seconds just to give the deputy chair of council a call. Okay, uh, can we do that in just one minute, ma'am? We'll give you a minute to do that so that we can reconnect and continue with the meeting. Thank you. Okay. Just to indicate that the chairperson has just joined the meeting. Thank you. Oh, thank you very much. Therefore, I can hand over to Chair. <laughs> oh, how does it work? <laughs> You'll assist us. I want to yeah, share the power for the day. <laughs> no, thank you, Honorable uh, Member Thati, and uh, apologies, Honorable Members. I just couldn't uh, get uh, to connect because uh, I'm in uh, Limpopo in a very rural area of my mother's village in Flag Plus. So I had to drive to Chain Fest to get connection. You may proceed uh, with the presentation. Mm -hmm. um, good morning once again, uh, honorable members. I have spoken to the chair of uh, the Deputy Chair of Council who is leading the ARC delegation. And good morning, Honorable Chair of the committee. When we started speaking, we had not uh, joined the meeting. We thank you for allowing the ARC to be the first uh, entity to begin the presentation. We um, have an ongoing council meeting over two days, yesterday and today. So part of what the Deputy Chair would have requested the portfolio committee to um, support the ARC with, in addition to the decision to allow us to go first, would be to humbly ask if the ARC delegation would then be allowed to take leave of the meeting once their presentation has been done and all the question and answers that are directed at the ARC on their presentation have been addressed. So I am making this request on behalf of the deputy chair and the chair of council who, um, the, who, who are not here because of the connectivity issues for the deputy chair, but for chairperson because she's chairing uh, the council meeting. That's the first point. 
and maybe I could wait for a response before I proceed. Or must I proceed, uh, Honorable Chair? Okay. Hi, Chair. I'm, I'm back online, so I just lost connection. Thank you. Okay. So, um, Dr. Mashaba is the Deputy Chair of ARC Council. I had just presented on your behalf um, a request that you said you would present to the portfolio committee on whether after the ARC has made its presentation and all the questions and answers have been addressed, if the portfolio committee will take a decision to release the ARC delegation. Um, we have not yet received the response, and um, I think the, the, the portfolio committee will, will, will proceed uh, and advise us after, afterwards. So in the interest of time, I can proceed with the presentation. Our presentation is um, structured to provide feedback on the ARC quarter one, quarter two, and quarter three um, performance information, both for predetermined objectives as well as financial performance. We would then go on to give a progress update on the ARC's control efficiencies and improvement plan, which we call the ACIP. And this is what under normal um, uh, lexicon or terminology we call an audit improvement plan. And all of these are as at 31st December 2021. So that is just about the overview of our presentation. The first um, few slides of our presentation is on the, the vision, the mission, and the mandate of the ARC, which the portfolio committee is already very well versed in. And in this regard, we, we wish to um, just skip the slides because the honorable members of the portfolio committee are fully aware and they have uh, approved these as part of our strategic plan and as part of our annual performance plan. Um, we also align our mandate, our vision to the priorities of, of government the MTSF priorities to which we align the work of the ARC. And this is the promotion of sustainability and equitable economic participation in the agriculture sector to promote agricultural development and growth in, in related industries, facilitate sector skills and de uh, skills development and knowledge management, facilitate and ensure natural resource conservation, promote national food and nutrition security and contribute to improved health and better quality of life. And um, now the next slide is about um, the quarter one performance. Um, um, our colleague, general manager for Hello, I think that yeah. having a Can you hear me? And I don't know how I got lost. I had um, just made a request if the ARC um, would then continue the presentation yeah. from slide eight. 
and that Dr. Bego team, the GM risk and planning can take it through. Oh, I, it looks like I got uh, lost in connection there. Am I still audible? I, I see a hand of Honorable Stein. Uh, Honorable Stein. I was still muted. Am I proceed? Sorry, Chairperson. Yes, I, I, we are struggling. It's the first time now that we are struggling to get um, to hear the ARC members. Um, can we check if, if they can proceed or we start with another entity and the ARC sort out the technical challenges? Chair, it's very difficult when they on and off and on and off to keep track of what's happening. Thank you, Chairperson. Now, honorable members, I was actually going to uh, propose that uh, we do take another presentation if we have uh, been having technical challenges with ARC, we can push them on later in uh, the, the other uh, presentations. Uh, is that in order? Yes, thank you, Chair. It's, it's really been a challenge um, on and off. Okay. Um, I, I don't know. Am I not audible, Chair? I thought I was on the platform and I thought the slides are on the screen. Yes, ma'am, the slides, it's Honorable Chote Chair. The slides are on the screen, but we are struggling to hear what you are talking, what, 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 when we are speaking. Hence, we are saying we, it's on and off, and mostly it's off. Um, can Mamunyamza uh, assist us in terms of, we just uh, said, ARC must sort out their connectivity issues. And we have another entity to present. Whilst you are sorting out, perhaps maybe you can indicate after the after another entity has presented, then ERC can come back um, if they have any better connectivity. Thanks. Well, uh, I bit. Uh... Um, Harriet has informed me that uh, the ARC, ARC, are you ready? Yes, we're ready, Chair. Can you uh, go ahead then? Okay. I introduced uh, the ARC presentation by indicating that ARC has um, feedback on quarter one, quarter two, and quarter three on performance against targets for all the outcomes of um, the six outcomes. We also have feedback on financial uh, performance. And over and above uh, this, we are presenting progress on the ARC's control efficiencies and improvement plan, which we call the ACEIP, which is otherwise our audit improvement plan. And therefore, in the delegation of the ARC is myself, Thompson Matita, the acting CEO, Dr. Hilton Vegotin, who is the general manager for risk and planning and the CFO, Ms. Maureen Manyama. And the CFO will make a presentation on the financial performance over, of the ARC over the three quarters. Dr. Hilton Vegotin will cover some of the analysis on the quarter one, quarter two, and quarter three performance information. And I have outlined that the first um, few slides of our presentation up to slide eight, we're covering the mandate of the ARC, the vision and the mission, as well as the outline of this presentation. 
And we are now on slide eight that speaks to the analysis of the quarter one performance information. And therefore, Dr. Begotin, if you can please, I'll move the slides for you. Um, just speak over the analysis that um, you have done as uh, risk and planning on the performance information. I'll mute my mic. Um, thank you, um, Acting CEO. Um, uh, morning, Honorable Chair and Honorable Members of the Portfolio Committee, um, DG, uh, as well as the Deputy Chair of Council, as well as other members from other entities and councils as well. Um, Chair, as indicated by the Acting CEO, I will go through performance information for the first quarter. Um, effectively, the ARC has uh, um, overall six outcome areas in which it uh, reports performance under, the first outcome being increased agriculture productivity uh, and production, um, number two being sustainable ecosystems and natural resources, number three referring to improved nutritional value, quality and safety of agriculture um, products, the next one, which is outcome number four, is a skilled and capable agriculture sector, which relates more to the training aspects as well as uh, the aspects of the science part of the agriculture um, publications and so forth. Outcome five, which is enhanced uh, resilience of agriculture. And outcome six, uh, focusing more internally, that has a focus on uh, ICT, uh, finance, um, and, and HR. For, for the first uh, quarter, we had um, a 53 overall for the financial year quarterly performance targets, of which for quarter one, there's only been uh, 32 performance targets that were reported on. And effectively, our performance for the first quarter is that we had about 72% of the targets being met um, and about 28% uh, that has not been met. What we've also done is we've done a comparative in terms of what that numbers would look like if we compare it to previous financial years during the same period. And one can see that performance have been uh, very high compared to um, other periods. We have indicated that there were some areas uh, that had contributed to us uh, not achieving much higher in terms of performance. And we had indicated that uh, there were some delays in terms of work that we are doing in field trials, although that has in uh, subsequent quarters actually been uh, concluded. There has been in terms of uh, specifically uh, the, the having farmer field days uh, in terms of some COVID restrictions uh, prevented us from having do, uh, done doing those farmer field days. Um, delays with the finalizations of certain of the SLAs, which then also um, had prevented us from achieving a much higher target when it comes to farmer assessments. The table at the bottom uh, just outlines uh, some further analysis in terms of the outcomes uh, that I've just mentioned earlier, in terms of what the target has been, what has been met, um, and then also the targets that has not been met, and also just indicating that outcome six is more annual targets, and there's no specific uh, ones that we can track performance on a quarterly basis, although there are performances that has been tracked in this area uh, quarterly. Next slide, please. Um, this is just another graphical um, representation of uh, the previous uh, slide that we had in terms of just the blue indicating the total uh, quarterly targets, green indicating that the target has been met, and red indicating that the target has not been met. But overall performance for this quarter um, has been 72, and again, comparatively, it is much higher than what we've had over the last two financial years. Next slide. Um, Chair, this is uh, going into quarter two. Um, again, also the focus is that for this particular quarter, we had about 40 performance targets that we had reported on. The reason for that is, is that uh, because we do a spread of the quarterly targets um, in terms of when certain deliverables can be expected, you have in this particular quarter, there were 14 indicators that did not have targets for which we were anticipating performance. 
Um, again, for this quarter, again, for quarter two performance information, we're standing at about 73 uh, targets that has been met. Um, and for quarter two targets not been met, we're looking at about 27. Um, again, we are doing a comparative uh, to prior financial years. And again, one can see the numbers are very, very high in terms of uh, ARC's performance uh, for the second quarter as well, um, being uh, um, achieved about 73%. Again, what we're doing in terms of an analysis, we're also indicating below the split in terms of the outcome area from outcome one to five. Um, and also what targets um, has actually been met and what has not been met. Next slide, please. Again, also representing just in, a, in bar graphs uh, what that picture looks like. Again, the blue reflecting the total uh, targets for the quarter, green indicating where the targets has been met, and then the red is indicating where targets for the quarter has not been met. Next slide, please. So this particular area focuses on quarter three. Um, and in this particular quarter, we had 43 performance targets that were reported on and 11 of the indicators had no targets for quarter three. Um, performance uh, that we have here, uh, slightly lower than what we had for previous quarters. One can see that uh, quarter three performance targets for this current financial year, we're standing at about 51%. And then quarter three, you have also targets not been met around 49. Comparatively, um, one can see that uh, last financial year, the same period, we were standing at about 50 50% met and 50% not met, which is uh, almost on par with uh, five minutes what remaining. Five minutes remaining. And then, thank you, Chair. Um, and also then also what it looks like in the previous year. What again we've also done is we've outlined in terms of uh, targets met and targets not met across these outcome areas. Next slide, please. The next one is also just indicating performance uh, against uh, uh, target over the um, same period, which is for quarter three. Again, the blue indicating where the target is, uh, green what we have met and red the area that we've not met. Um, Chair, that will conclude my part of the presentation on the performance information. Thank you. CFO, please take over on the financial performance information. Okay, thank you, Acting CEO, and uh, good morning to the portfolio committees and the colleagues from the entities in the department. I will skip the financial results for quarter one and quarter two. I'll focus on quarter three because we report on a year-to-date uh, basis. Okay, thank you. Uh, in terms of the financial performance of the organization, we have reported an operating surplus of 11.1 .1 million. And then there has been some delayed spending within our personal cost where the, there's been a delay in terms of uh, filling of vacancies and also the delayed spending on the operating expenditure. Uh, in terms of our cash position, we are currently, or, or at that time, at end of December, we're sitting at 919.2 million. Included in that amount is 452.4. Uh, that relates to the, to the FMD um, project. Then we continue to deliver the operating um, op positive cash flows from operating activities, 443.8 million. And just to confirm that the organization is currently sitting at a net current asset position, meaning that our current assets exceed our current liabilities and the solvency and liquidity, liquidity assessment uh, continue, continues to be satisfactory. On the negative side, um, we are currently experiencing uh, delays or yeah, delays in terms of delivering on external income, 51% below the year-to-date budget. Uh, this is a similar trend in terms of what we, we as the organization would have delivered in the past. And um, other income um, currently below, below year-to-date budget and similar trend we have experienced during the last financial period. And then just to indicate that um, I think it was two years, if not yeah, two and a half years ago, we handed over the 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 debt that the old department of staff uh, owed the ARC 
and then we continue to pursue the collection uh, through the legal process. Maybe just to also provide further information, we currently have got the old debt for DAV and old debt for rural development. So for the rural development, we did receive the payment on the 31st of March uh, 2021. And currently the old rural development debt is sitting at 4.8 million, whilst the DAV uh, debt is sitting at 20.4 million. Included in that 20.4, the old debt uh, is 16.3 million. And then we can go to the next slide. Um, here, just to highlight that we continue to receive the operational uh, parliamentary grant uh, through the National Treasury and Darald. And also um, at the beginning of the financial year, we did not budget for the PG that we received from DSI. We have since received a letter of commitment. So we have already received the funds that DSI normally would disperse, disperse um, to the ARC. We can go to the next slide. On the balance sheet side, the net asset value of the organization is sitting at 2.1 billion. We are currently um, experiencing some delay in spending on the CAPEX uh, because at the end of quarter three, the CAPEX spend was around 26.8 million. The total allocated amount to the organization is um, around 100 million, which is made up of the CAPEX commitments and the, um, the new parliamentary grant CAPEX that has been allocated. Uh, on the accounts receivable side, we don't have any challenges in terms of the, the current data. The challenge for the organization is the old data, which I have highlighted the departments are the ones that are dominating. On the creditor side, we continue to pay our suppliers um, swiftly, and we don't have the challenge in that regard. Then on the cash overview, as I've indicated, the balance is 919.2 million, 54% of that is CPD, which is the FMD project. And we have since opened another CPD accounts because there was a directive from National Treasury for Schedule 3A and 3C entities to start investing the monies with CPD um, and not the, the commercial banks. The next slide. Um, in terms of our financial KPIs that are on the APP, uh, the areas where we are lagging behind is on external income. Our annual target is to be at 30% of total um, revenue. We are currently sitting at 16%. Then the other one was the personal cost as a percentage of operational parliamentary grant. Our target is 80%. We are currently sitting at 83%, and we anticipate that we won't be able to meet that target because the KPI came as a result of the ARC sustainability internal plan, which uh, still needs to be implemented. Then if we move quickly to the um, progress on the audit improvement plan, we call it an uh, controls and efficiencies improvement plan. It's an 18 months plan, which will be ending end of September, 2022. In terms of the initiatives, there are at various stages in terms of implement implementation, but we can safely say that everything has been um, initiated in line with the plan that we have as the organization. Can we conclude? Can we conclude? Okay, thanks, Chair. In line with the plans of the organization, and then the last slide is just showing the initiatives that we have on the ASIP plan and um, the, the number of initiatives. The detailed document has been provided with the submission. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Honorable um, Chairperson, it seems like your connectivity is quite bad. Maybe if you could switch off the video, it will be better. I think you can take over if the chairperson is cut. Carpet. Good. 
Thank you very much, uh, uh, Makakaza and uh, honorable members. It seems like the chair has challenges with connectivity. I am not sure whether we would want to take um, inputs and questions of clarity at this point. If so, I would see on the chat by the raising of hands if there are questions of clarity. Honorable members. Honorable Stain, any questions or clarity? Honorable Montuid or Honorable Stain? Sorry, it looks like we are all struggling today with connectivity. I think we need to go back to live meetings. Um, Chairperson, now I think the presentation was clear. Um, uh, I'm not sure if um, we can ask the questions, but we have received this unanimous letter. I'm not sure if that is up for discussion today. I will um, stay with your guidelines on that, Chairperson. Thank you. Honorable Stein, uh, the uh, matter is still to be discussed uh, by the committee. We've just uh, received uh, these allegations that we need to have a uh, presentation and engage with before we can uh, be able to uh, put them uh, before the committee. So I think uh, that was shared for the consumption of uh, the honorable members and also to better understand the issues within the ARC. We will come back to that and engage with them when uh, the time allows. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Chair. I'll stay with that. Thank you. No questions. Thank you, Honorable uh, Montuedi. Honorable Montuedi. Honorable Marshall, Mem Marshall. Uh, Honorable Chair, I think I'm also covered for now. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Kappa. Honorable Kappa. Akbar Ebriet. Morgen, voorzitter. Hoe gaat het? Goed in zelf. Yes, good, man. Chairperson, I just have two questions. Um, one was with regard to the CFO's presentation, um, the amount for FMD ring fenced. I would just like to find out, um, I can't remember the amount now, It's I think it's 43 million. Um, uh, how much of that budget was spent during um, the first three quarters and um, what was it spent on? And then just the second question and last uh, question, Chairperson, um, the additional uh, document that they sent through that Cynthia, Cynthia sent through yesterday, um, it speaks of um, uh, the disciplinary cases um, that is unresolved with regard to the financial year 2019-2020. Um, in terms of UIFW expenditure. Um, I would just like to find out from uh, the from ARC how far they are in terms of those, or how many disciplinary cases they were, how many are outstanding still, and what is the timeline for their um, completion um, in terms of that chairperson. Uh, otherwise, quite clear, thank you so much. Thank you, Akbar Repret. Honorable Mamun Babama. Mamun Babama. Chairperson has put in an apology and also Honorable Masipa uh, to put in an apology. He was on earlier, but he has to leave for another meeting now. Thank you. Um, any other honorable member on the platform who may wish to pose a question I've not been able to recognize? Honorable Mahati, are you covered? Thank you very much, Che. I'm covered. Thank you. 
Any other honorable member? If not honorable members, uh, can the ARC uh, indicate how far is the process to fill in the CEO position that became vacant since August 2021? Additionally, it should also provide to the portfolio committee the progress on the appointment of the positions of group executive for research and innovation systems and the group executive for human resources and legal services that both became vacant since November 2020. Secondly, Honorable members, uh, the ARC should further indicate to the portfolio committee whether there are other executive and critical senior management positions that are vacant and the impact of the vacancies on the entity's operations and subst substantiality. Thirdly, honorable members, the ARC should provide reasons for the areas that have not been sufficiently addressed in the audit improvement plan, particularly the conclusion of monthly reviews of the contract register, which is a supply chain management matter that has not been resolved, as well as the delay in the conclusion of disciplinary cases relating to irregular expenditure uh, that amounts to about 2.5 million rents for the 2019-2020 financial year. And uh, lastly, honorable members, uh, the ARC should also indicate how far is the implementation of the structure and whether organized labor and other affected employees have been consulted before finalizing the structure. Thank you. Let us uh, hand over to the ARC for responses. Yeah, thanks, Chairperson. Uh, thanks for the questions. I think they've been well noted. You know, in as a deputy chairperson uh, leading the ARC delegation, I will respond to some of the questions and then some of the operational issues will be handled by the acting CEO and also the CFO. Now, Chairperson, in my opening remarks, in fact, I was cut off as I was um, making my opening remarks. You know, I also wanted to touch on the issue of the appointment of the CEO of the ALC. You know, I'm happy to inform the committee that in, um, we went through the process of recruitment and then council made a, you know, a decision on the CEO, on the new CEO for the ALC, and the matter went to the minister, and the minister supported the decision of council, and it went to cabinet, and also cabinet confirmed the appointment of Dr. Lita Maginka. He is going to be the new CEO of the ALC from the 1st of April. So that process, uh, Chairperson, it has been concluded. And we're waiting for Dr. Maginka to join the, AR, the ARC as the new CEO from the 1st of April. And Chairperson, we as council also decided that we will not be in a position to move ahead during this period since, you know, the previous CEO left last year in August of appointing executives for the new CEO for the research and innovation and also for HR and legal services. So we put that process on a, on a you know, slow uh, mood to ensure that in, we bring in the new CEO who will then be able to have uh, uh, the, the authority to appoint his own team that will take the ARC forward into the new environment that we intend to take the ARC into of agility of being able to operate efficiently and effectively to achieve his own mandate. So that process, Chairperson, for the two uh, executives, is in the is waiting for the for the new CEO to come on board. And Chairperson, also in my opening remarks, you know, I also wanted to inform uh, the committee that it's unfortunate that we are also losing uh, our chief 
financial officer, uh, Ms. Maureen Manyama, who is with us today in this meeting. From the 1st of March, she's leaving the ALC. You know, council have tried to, to, to engage her, you know, uh, you know, around the, uh, her, you know, her reasons. And she informed council that she has already made up her mind for some time now, for some few years, to leave the ALC. And she's moving into greener pastures. And council had no other option but you know to, to accept a resignation as from the first of March, and the process is underway to to advertise for for a new CFO. And we are hopeful that when the new um, CEO comes in, he will take over that process and 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 move much faster to ensure that we strengthen our capacity at the executive level. So so those are the three areas. Uh, at the executive level where there are gaps, uh, chairperson, and we are hopeful that in, in the next three months we'll have actually made sure that in, uh, we have new capacity coming into the ARC to take the ARC forward. And chairperson, I'll then you know hand over to the to the acting CEO to speak on the issues of uh, the delays in the disciplinary cases and also the issue raised by the honourable member Briet on the issue of the defence FMD uh, expenditure for the for the last three quarters. Thank you, Chair. Uh, C C O, can you come in? Thank you, Deputy Chair of Council, and thank you, um, Honourable Chair of the Portfolio Committee and Honourable Members. I think, uh, Deputy Chair of Council, there is a question that was asked by the Honourable Chair of the Portfolio Committee on the implementation of the structure and whether organized labor has been consulted. And I would like to just uh, indicate that in view of um, the starting date of the new CEO being 1st of April, the ARC has not uh, amended the structure and uh, any changes to the structure will be in consultation with uh, organized labor. However, we continuously engage with organized labor through our um, NBF process and on any other uh, amalgamations or changes that are happening as a result of operational requirements, which are not really organization wide, but specific to certain areas of the operation, organized labor is at all times being consulted. So once the structure uh, changes, portfolio committee will also be informed as well as the department. And uh, the remaining questions therefore would be questions on finance um, as well as audit improvement plan, including those um, irregular expenditure, which the CFO will take um, over in response. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Um, the two questions that are relating to the FMD, the FMD funds, as we speak today, um, being the 25th of Feb, is sitting at 509 million, 509 million. And this is the total funds that uh, government has promised the ARC. It also includes the interest that has been earned to date from the CPD. Then how much was spent on FMD during the period under review? It's only 1.4 million that has been spent uh, for FY 2022 year to date. And that uh, relates to the electrical update, uh, I mean upgrade. There has been a couple of tenders that have gone out most of which are for, for professional services. And then they are towards the awards um, stage in terms of the procurement process. Then the questions relating to the monthly reviews of the contract register. Um, I can inform the committee that the contract register has since been um, updated and automated during the period under review. And it has been aligned to the national treasury um, template and the issue here um, at the end of the financial period was that there was no proof in terms of the sign off of review by the senior manager SCM. So that matter has been, or the control has been emphasized to ensure that the, when someone reviews or proves uh, or, or claims that they have reviewed something, 
they can prove that with the signature um, on that document. Then regarding the delay in the disciplinary, uh, ex, uh, what do you call, disciplinary cases relating to irregular expenditure, I can confirm that the where two cases uh, relating to FY 2018-19 uh, regarding the use of garden services, the, the, the disciplinary processes has been finalized uh, during the period under review, meaning year to date, and the two employees has since been dismissed um, in terms of uh, the outcome of the hearing. Then there, were, there was another case where, which was uh, initiated as well. And the, unfortunately, the, 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 the employee resigned um, in the process of the disciplinary process. And the chairperson who was an external uh, legal person indicated that we cannot continue with the process because we can't, um, the, the organization doesn't have um, jurisdiction over someone who has actually um, resigned. But the process is currently, um, there is progress that has been made in that regard. And during the period under review, we submitted the request for condonation of irregular expenditure uh, related, that has been incurred by the organization in the past. It was made up of the over expenditure that the organization incurred during 2016 to 2018 and also SCM related um, cases. We have since received the approval from the National Treasury on the SCM matters. Whilst on the over expenditure matter, we have had an engagement with them they were still going to engage with the um, state attorneys just to assess in terms of uh, where does the delegation lies in terms of uh, the condonation, if whether the, the national treasury can condone, or is it a matter that needs to come up to um, uh, parliament? So basically, that's that is where we are, uh, chair. And the, there has been, in terms of the cases that have been concluded during the current period, they are currently with council so that council can be uh, can review and then co uh, support the request for condonation and once that support is received we will submit to the national treasury before the end of this financial year thank you chair thank you honorable members those are the responses from the arc we will uh, uh, request uh, for those responses to be sent uh, in writing uh, to the Secretariat for the processing of uh, the honorable members. The other matters uh, be, we will revert uh, back uh, honorable members uh, when we have studied the documents and we can be able to engage with the ARC on the issues that have been uh, sent to the committee. Let us uh, move on and uh, uh, take uh, both the uh, presentation of uh, the OBP and NAMEC together. Uh, we'll give uh, uh, 20 minutes per uh, presentation. If we can try and just be direct to the point of the issues so we can uh, be able to engage uh, with both presentations after uh, they are done. Uh, OPP, please uh, proceed. And uh, NEMEC, stand by. Good morning, Honorable Chairperson. Um, I'm not sure if members are able to see me. Uh, good morning, Honorable Chairperson, Honorable yes, uh, Portfolio Committee members. Clearly, Thanks, Chair. Uh, honorable members, uh, fellow board members from um, other uh, institutions, um, the OBP board and management. Um, Chief, I can maybe ask if the presentation can just be loaded. Thank 
And we have the presentation uploaded. Ralph, are you available? I don't like it when it has this blue flag. <laughs> tap to speak. You, you tap it accidentally. Yeah. And every uh, every has to experience. Please mute your microphones. We just need uh, the presentation uploaded, not conversation. And we have uh, the presentation uploaded. <laughs> Is Ralph uh, available? Ralph, are you on the platform? We'll upload the presentation. All right. Thanks, uh, Luvuya Mabongo. Can you please upload the presentation? Lovoyo, can you upload the presentation? I like, I like the noise of the chickens. They say, "Person, I you have to show us." <laughs> I told you I'm in the village, right in the rural areas today. <laughs> I, I like the chickens, they're my favorite. Yeah, that's Limpopo for you. That's the game, Jim. Is Nemec ready with their presentation? Yeah. Nemec, are you ready with your presentation? Uh, good morning, uh, good morning, uh, Honorable Chair. We, we are ready if we can be given rights uh, to, to project. All right. Uh, Manyamza, can you assist uh, with uh, enabling uh, NEMEC uh, to upload their presentation so we can move on? We will have to come back to OBP. Who must I upload from the NEMEC chair? The name of the person to be given permission, chair? It's uh, SMP Wangnawin. Okay. I'll do that. The IRC uh, can be excused to go and attend to other businesses of the day. Uh, you may proceed. Thank you, Honorable Chair. Uh, Honorable Chair, we're just waiting for, for us, for, for the rights to, to show the presentation on the screen. 
Permission granted, Mr. Norway. Thank you. Uh, see. Uh, good morning, uh, Honorable Chair, uh, Honorable Members, uh, DG, the, the members of the boards of the entities. Uh, Honorable Chair, with your permission, uh, the, the chairperson of the board of the NEMC, as well as the deputy chair, are here uh, to make introductory remarks. Thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you very much, Sampiwe. Honorable Chairperson, my name is Angelo Peterson. Uh, some of you will know me from my previous life as the chairperson of the PPECB for six years. Um, it's an honor to... Um, make a few introductory remarks with the National Agricultural Marketing Council. Um, it's a very important institution in our agricultural strategy. I'm accompanied by the deputy chairpersons, Ms. Tandeka and Nanshangase, and uh, the CEO will introduce his team. Um, you will remember that uh, Ms. Shangase, the deputy chairperson, led the last uh, delegation because of my leave of absence and uh, she has guided the organization for a period of five months in my absence, and she's done a sterling job in doing so. Uh, Honorable Chairperson and members, when we took over as the new board, uh, the NMC, uh, we found potential uh, legacy issues that could destabilize the organization, um, and it was very important that we deal um, with these issues quite emphatically. The board therefore resolved um, to have a back to basics approach uh, to resource the organization uh, adequately within our budgetary uh, constraints and to make sure that we are able to deliver on our mandate and that we are indeed resourced to do so. Uh, we are making sure uh, progress, it might be slow at times, uh, but we are, are moving forward as you uh, would be able to, to see from the presentations that the management team would be doing now. So uh, thank you very much for indulging us. And uh, we we are looking forward to engage with you further. Thank you very much. Over to you, C CEO. Thank you, Mayor Peterson. The pleasure, Chairperson. <laughs> Let's proceed with the presentation, please. Well, Nangwen, you may go ahead and present. Apologies, uh, Honorable Chair, I was muted. Um, I will do the bulk of the presentation, uh, Honorable Chair. And, and then the CFO will cover the few slides on the financials, as well as our audit improvement plan. I will come back quickly for, a, for, for concluding remarks. Uh, Chairperson, I've got uh, about 28 slides, but I'm not going to go into detail. We will just go through the highlights of our performance for the past uh, three quarters of the 2021-22 financial year, as well as our audit improvement plan. As the, owner, as the chairperson of the board has indicated, we are looking at uh, a much more improved picture. Uh, we have one or two challenges which I will, I will, I will address uh, during my presentation and look at how we're going, how we're going to solve that uh, going forward. Uh, chairperson, just a, a, quick re a quick recap of our mandate, uh, which is enshrined in the Marketing of Agricultural Products Act number 47 of 1996. We are authorized to establish and enforce regulatory measures to intervene in the marketing of agricultural products. Uh, these are uh, notably in the form of statutory levies, uh, statutory measures uh, in, in broad terms. Uh, the Act provided for the, for the establishment of the NEMC. In terms of our roles, in Section 9, it states that when we are requested by the minister or out of our own accord, 
we report to the minister and advise her on matters pertaining to statutory measures that relate to the marketing of agricultural products. We, we also advise the minister regarding the achievement of the four marketing of agricultural products act objectives, the four broad objectives which the honorable members are quite familiar with. Um, in terms of implementation of that mandate, we have our rolling five-year strategic plan as well as the annual performance plan uh, on, an, on an annual basis, which we, which we review and we operate on the basis of. In terms of the outcomes, uh, as, as indicated in our annual performance plan, we've got uh, uh, three broad outcomes, um, and I'm going to go into that just now. Um, maybe as a summary, before I get into uh, program two or outcome two, um, in terms of our achievement over the past three quarters, out of the 36 targets that are applicable or were applicable during the, the period under review, we have managed to achieve 28 of those. Um, and we're going to get into detail in terms of uh, which ones were, were not achieved and how far we are uh, and how we are sorting out uh, the uh, and making sure that we, we achieve these targets uh, going forward. Um, let, me, let me go and, 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 uh, and look at a few slides that uh, present highlights in terms of achievement of, of program two or outcome two, which is an enabling agricultural marketing policy and statutory environment. I'll start with statutory measures. Section 10 of the act stipulates that directly affected groups may apply for statutory measures. So this process is basically a voluntary process. Over the past uh, seven years, we have uh, noticed that on average, um, each year we receive about 31 well, 0.3 applications per financial year. Um, we have therefore set a target uh, of, of 30 per year based on, on the on the seven year average. Um, however, we, we have realized that uh, because this, this target is actually uh, dependent on factors that are outside our control, direct control, uh, because the process is voluntary, we will review this target uh, going forward. We are now sitting at 16 applications in terms of the first three quarters and we foresee that uh, as we as we close the financial year, it is unlikely that we will achieve the 30, the target of 30, purely because this is a voluntary process and this is probably one of the years that is a bit quiet. But as I said, Chair, we, we are looking at uh, reviewing this target because we, we, in terms of the SMART principle, we just need to make sure that we, we don't set a target uh, that depends on factors that are, are beyond our control. In terms of Section 9 of the Act, we are supposed to monitor the application of statutory measures. Um, during the first three quarters, we were in the process of uh, compiling the 2021 uh, status of statutory measures report. And the report does indicate an increase in terms of the levies that were collected from 735 million to 808 million. Um, approximately 38.5 of that uh, money was spent on research, 21% on transformation. Uh, which is uh, just over the, the, the target and the guideline that we have set of 20%. 9.3 was spent on information, 8.7 on export promotions, 8.3% on local consumer education. We, we also produce a monthly supply and demand estimates report for grains. Um, Chair, I'm not going to go through all those numbers. The picture there is that we are looking at a very uh, good year this year in terms of the, 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 the harvest. And also in terms of our stock levels, we, we are standing in a good position for all the major grains. Um, even if this, this has happened even in the face of the, um, some of the unfavorable uh, rainy uh, weather in terms of flooding that we've had, we are, we are estimating a very good crop coming up. Uh, also as a result of that, in terms of so soya, so uh, in terms of the soya industry, we are looking at uh, increased uh, supplies uh, in terms of uh, uh, crushing capacity, uh, in terms of the, the, the crushing of the soya bean, uh, which is expected to reach 1.4 uh, million tons in 2021-22. In terms of uh, our trade research, we, we, are, we are also active in terms of providing advice to the International Trade Administration Commission. Uh, this, this, this period under review, we handled three cases, one uh, regarding um, the review of the poultry tariff structure, as well as uh, the case of uh, creation of a rebate facility on bulk white chocolate. Uh, and the last one was uh, concerning uh, the importation of uh, dried crushed or ground fruits. 
I chaired, the, usually the, um, the content of those reports, uh, it remains uh, um, confidential until uh, the minister makes a decision uh, and determination on, the, on these applications. But we have uh, provided our inputs uh, on these reports. In terms of market intelligence, Chair, we, we also produce nine uh, market intelligence uh, reports. Uh, we produce nine during the period under review. Uh, looking at uh, uh, trends in international grain prices, um, uh, we, we have uh, noticed uh, that uh, in terms of prices of grains and oil seeds internationally, these remain high due to a steady demand throughout the world, the world led by China. Um, uh, this is just one of the uh, the highlights. Chair, let me not go into into the details. It's, it's just suffice to say, um, these reports are produced on a monthly basis, and they. Um, go on to assist in terms of decision making within um, within the sector. Uh, let me let me quickly rush into the uh, the activities that we monitor um, uh, in terms of agricultural industry trusts. We um, during the, uh, the the period under review, we were uh, we collected information in terms of the status of agricultural industries uh, at trusts. Um, the previous year, we had reported that we had a 2 billion, a 2.2 billion uh, value in terms of the in terms of the trust, uh, and there was a decline of 67 uh, million uh, uh, from 2.3 20, 20, 20, billion. Uh, apologies uh, from the previous pr previous year. This was mainly due to poor investment um, uh, because of the prevailing uh, uh, market conditions as a result of COVID. Uh, good news, uh, though, is that the transformation expenditure increased from 76.6 million in 2020 to 66.3 million in 2019. So those are just the highlights. Chair, let me just indicate that in, in terms of our monitoring of the activities of the trust, uh, we, 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 we remain with challenges in terms of the winter cereal trust. The trust is no longer collecting uh, uh, levies, uh, which was the main source of income. Um, uh, there are currently administrative and, and governance challenges that the trust is, is going through. Uh, the minister has requested a report from uh, the deputy the, the, from the director general, uh, assisted by by ourselves. We are due to brief minister in terms of the status of the trust. We also made recommendations in terms of how uh, the affairs of the trust can be turned around. We also continue to monitor the the. The, the activities of this trust on the ground, we, we undertake visits uh, on a quarterly basis. Uh, during the period under review, uh, we focused on the uh, winter cereal, um, uh, the grain industry, the milk industry, um, as well as raisins and uh, the poultry industry, uh, the egg industry, pork industry, as well as the potato industry. And uh, we, we document some of the good work that is being done uh, on, on this, uh, with, uh, uh, by these trusts in terms of transformation uh, through the, our, our transformation review committee, and we report this uh, on, a, on a quarterly basis. Let me jump to program three, Chair. Um, agricultural, the agricultural sector is viable, inclusive, competitive as an economic sector. And I would like to just report some highlights in terms of our contribution to this broad goal. Um, here, Chair, we've got good news in the sense that we we target on an annual base, on a quarterly basis, uh, to link 20 farmers at least uh, to, to to markets. This is usually uh, emerging farmers and smallholder farmers uh, who are uh, um, have, who have challenges in terms of market access. I'm happy to to report that we uh, out of the um, the 60 that we were supposed to have uh, linked over the past three quarters, uh, in other words, 20 per quarter. We are currently sitting at 90 uh, farmers that uh, we have linked uh, to the market. So this target has basically been overachieved so far in the past three quarters. Uh, we, we have uh, assisted farmers uh, in, in the, uh, uh, to access the Kai Fresh produce market in, in, in the Eastern Cape. We've also assisted uh, potato farmers uh, in Limpopo. Um, we also have provided farmer development support, uh, or we facilitated the provision of development support with our partners in the province, in the provinces, uh, for 20, 29 farmers. Uh, Chair, this is just some more details uh, where we, we've also worked with the farmers in the Free State. Um, 
uh, vegetable farmers in the Butsabelo area. Uh, we've also worked with the National Lucent Trust to link 19 Lucent farmers in the Northwest province. Um, we also facilitated development support with our partners for 39 farmers, which we linked to the markets during quarter two. During quarter three, we also worked with gold farmers in the KZN, in the KZN province. Um, we also provided uh, or facilitated development support with our partners in the province for 22 farmers that we linked to the market. Uh, Chair, quickly on, on human capital, we made five permanent appointments during the period under review. We also made five con contract appointments during the same period. Um, in addition to that, uh, 123 uh, project employees were, were, were employed in the National Red Meat Development Program. As the honorable members will remember, this program is now moving to the ARC. Uh, we are currently implementing a transitional plan for that for the program to move to the ARC. And this stuff uh, we we will, will, be, will be transferred. Thank you, Chair, we'll do so. Will be transferred to the ARC. Um, let me, in, in the interest of time, Chair, uh, give over to the CFO to go through the financials as well as our audit improvement plan. Uh, thank you, thank you, CEO. And good morning, honorable members. And this is my first time presenting to this committee as the CFO of the NAMC. I will take you through briefly uh, the per financial performance over the past three quarters. Uh, in terms of our budget spent, we are well spending in terms of how we've planned. Uh, we've got a target of 25% each quarter, and we have been doing well over the three quarters. And in terms of uh, unqualified reports, uh, we did receive the unqualified reports during the, the, the previous audit, and we are still planning to receive the same even in this financial, uh, this current financial year. In terms of our ITC reports, we are also on target on that one. Uh, with regard to our percentage of uh, 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 procurement spent, in terms of our preferential procurements, we are not really doing well there. However, in terms of local suppliers, we have been doing well over the quarters. Uh, with regard to the 30% target for women, we only met our target in the first quarter and the second and the third quarter we didn't really, the third quarter we didn't do well. The same with the youth and person with the disabilities. We, we are also struggling to get uh, the service provider or the suppliers in those categories for the procurement that we have undertaken. And with regard to our financial performance, uh, if you look at our budget uh, uh, members, we, we had 50 million, uh, 50.1 million as the budget for the current financial year uh, as the revenue. And uh, in terms of our actual spending, I mean, our actual revenue received, sorry, is 53.9 million. And what made that uh, increase is mainly the revenue that we receive from our sponsorships. We've got uh, various uh, 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 sponsorships that we receive. Uh, for example, you, we do receive funds from the Agresita. We also have the NRMDP uh, uh, project that the CEO has just alluded to. So that's what led to, to the increased uh, revenue on sponsorship revenue. With regard to spending, yeah, a, a bulk of our spending is on compensation of employees. And however, we are still within the budget. The only area where we went over budget was on the operating expenses. However, it's mainly some of the project expenses. We are doing well because our surplus is at the end of the third quarter was 12 million. In terms of our audit improvement action plan, we had uh, 10 major uh, audit findings from our previous uh, financial year. And of those 10, five have been fully implemented. 
we don't anticipate to have a, a, a repeat findings on those. We, however, have other areas where it's work in progress, like uh, there was an investigation to be to be handled by, by, by the council subcommittee. That's in progress. We also have uh, the non-compliance on consequence management. We are currently busy with that uh, process with regard to the condonation of the previous uh, irregular expenditure. However, going forward, that's what uh, SNMC we will be implementing to ensure that should there be any area of non-compliance uh, that leads to irregular consequence management as required by the uh, Treasury prescripts will, will be implemented. And uh, the other area also that are in progress is the declaration of interest policy. It's almost uh, ready to be presented also to, to the council. And uh, the annual financial statements uh, review that will be done as we conclude the current financial year. And the issue of the assets is also receiving a, a, a priority. We uh, have currently, we are appointing a person who will just assist us to ensure that even at the end, we don't have that finding. And uh, that's in summary. Thank you, Chairperson. Uh, in conclusion, uh, Honorable Chair, um, the targets were mostly met for all three quarters, except in the case of uh, statutory measure applications, as well as uh, CFO indicated in the case of some prefer preferential procurement targets. Uh, and these are being reviewed going forward. Um, Chair, we, uh, in the process, as, as uh, CFO has mentioned, there has been a, a, a cumulative uh, irregular expenditure from previous financial years, which we are in the process of uh, getting condonation from the National Treasury. Uh, thank you, Chair, and we, we are grateful for the support and the oversight of, of Council, uh, as well as, our, as the subcommittees. Uh, that is the end of our presentation, Chairperson. Thank you. Thank you, Bon Nangwen. Can we have the presentation of ARC, please? ARC. Good morning, uh, Honorable Chair. Uh, I'd like to request uh, rights to share the screen, please. It's Elspeth Governor, CFO from OBP. Thank you, Mamu Kovenda. We'll uh, certainly do that. Can we have uh, the Secretariat uh, make uh, Mamu Kovenda a co-host? Mamu Kinos, you may proceed. Uh, good morning, Chair, and apologies for um, the delay on the presentation earlier. Um, good morning, everyone. Chair, in the interest of time, I'm not sure if it's okay if I can perhaps proceed um, in giving yes, our, our feedback and just catch up with the presentation when it comes. Um, Chair, I'd like to start with just a, a summary on the achievements at the OBP with regards to its um, uh, performance and sales over the last three quarters. Um, I'll start with uh, the year-to-date figures. In terms of our revenue from April to December, um, we achieved 146.1 million um, actual um, in relation to a budget of 159, which means that we did not achieve to our sales for 12.9 million. However, in our expenditure and as a result of our cost containment measure um, exercises that we've implemented, uh, our actual was 90.3 versus a budget of 121 million, which means that we underspent by 30.7 million, uh, which then included a 14.9 million in respect of the, the reduction exercises that we had. Uh, on a quarter by quarter basis, quarter one sales, um, we had an actual of 34. If I, we can just go straight to um, slide four. Um, quarter one sales, we had uh, 34. 4 uh, million rand sales um, in relation to a 44 million rand um, budget that, that had been allocated, um, which related to a 35% uh, performance achievement. 
quarter two, uh, 62 million sales versus 55 million sales. So we exceeded our budget in quarter two um, and our performance was 50%. In quarter three, our sales was 52.3 million versus a budget of 59.7 million, meaning an underachievement of 7.4 million and an overall achievement of 53%. Chair measures were put in place in order for us to, to achieve on our targets uh, for the end of the year. Um, and we we appear on track barring um, uh, issues in our HR environment. If I can then just move on to the next slide, please. Chair, just very quickly, I'd like to, to um, go into some of the um, issues that the OBP has been dealing with over the last while. Um, it is known, um, I think even to the portfolio committee, that this uh, board was met with legacy issues um, and, and we're dealing with them as, um, as swiftly as we can. I'd like to deal firstly with the management of industrial relations. Um, and, and this is an area that has caused um, instability in, in the organization, mainly as a result of our um, inefficiencies or our, our um, lack of resources in the HR environment, specific area HR manager. And, and this is evidenced by the fact that in the last three years, we've probably had five people in that environment, five HR managers in the environment which obviously gave rise to um, various employee relations um, matters being unresolved and eventually ending up at the CCMA. It also further gave rise to the fact that um, due to a lack of clear um, roles and responsibilities that um, the unions then assumed the responsibility of co-managing the organization. In an endeavor to, to correct the situation, um, uh, uh, actions are being put in place, but of course, this now is causing consternation between the um, the shop stewards and the unions. But management will continue um, in its endeavour to to rectify what is wrong in the organisation um, going forward. In terms of our, our human capital capital development. Um, in, in this regard, there's two reports that um, prior reports, um, the productivity essay report uh, from November 2016, as well as a skills audit report um, of 2020, the recommendations of which was never implemented. Um, the board in, in its January meeting approved a refined organizational structure um, which will take care of, of the recommendations of those reports, coupled with the fact that we've also made provision for a, an um, a employee relations manager to deal with, with the matters at hand. Um, and we will also ensure that managers are trained to be able to undertake disciplinary matters in these uh, specific areas, thus reducing the, the um, pressure on, on the HR environment. Uh, this coupled with the fact that from a, on a risk management basis, we've also identified policies that will be reviewed on an ongoing basis. Some of our policies have been outdated. In terms of innovation, research and development, uh, management will deal with this issue a bit later in the slides in more detail. But just to say to you that a number of new vaccine products are under development in collaboration with both local and international um, uh, research institutions and funding agencies. In terms of our product availability, and I'm sure portfolio committee members would have seen quite a bit of this in, in the media recently, um, but uh, management will deal with the issues around our production and our sales. But to say that our scientists are constantly in, in communication and consultation with, with various um, animal health fora. Um, in our recent strategy, uh, we, we had a consultative process where National Animal Health Forum, um, South African weather services in terms of uh, weather patterns, especially for the eastern part of the country, uh, as well as the CSIR were taken into account in, in the development of our strategy uh, and our production planning going forward. In addition to that, Chairs, of course, our ailing infrastructure that we've reported on previously, 
And in this regard, we've approved a planned and preventative maintenance plan. We also have an all-encompassing production plan and a seven-year um, infrastructure investment plan, which then takes me to, to the elephant in the room for OBP, which is the GMP project. With regards to GMP, Chair, um, National Treasury issued or, or granted um, the OBP 492 million in or around 2013-2014 financial year. Um, and to date, um, at the last financial year, uh, 253 million had been spent of that of that monies. Um, of course, um, when we came in on the 1st of November 2020, the contract had already been suspended um, due to disputes in on, on the contractual terms and conditions. Uh, the board and management continues to, to unravel what had happened with, with the GMP project. And, and we um, putting together sequential um, uh, documentation that um, that supports the the expenditure that had transpired during or what was incurred during that time, and we we trust that individuals that were involved in the process will assist in providing further information. Parallel to that is the fact that we are in consultation um, with experts with regards to the with proceeding with the GMP uh, project. From a consequence management perspective, um, again, um, Chair, we had reported on um, in the last two or three committees um, that um, we had placed our former CEO and the manager in his office on proportionate suspension. Um, I can report that on the 21st of December 2021, 20, um, we dismissed both individuals. Um, they have, however, taken the matters to the CCMA. The OBP continues um, to, to, to deal with, with matters of wrongdoing in the organization um, on an ongoing basis. I have referred to the organizational structure that we refined and approved at our January meeting. With regards to capacity of our EXCO, um, we have a fully fledged team, barring the fact that we have an acting CEO um, in the interim chair. Again, we couldn't appoint until our disciplinary processes were completed. Um, in, in terms of EXCO, we appointed the last um, EXCO member that was appointed was our uh, Chief Operations Officer, and that was on the, on the 1st of November 2021. Um, stakeholder management, um, we've had to um, uh, build a rapport with, with all our stakeholders because it was an area that was lacking um, and, and it's something that the board and management has, has um, I guess, rekindled with our stakeholders and, and we remain to, to stay in consultation with them. From a board effective, effectiveness perspective, um, due to the leakage of information that we had was, and, and suspected within the OBP, um, the board has um, now also implemented a, a board um, management platform where all matters of the board um, is directly loaded onto this platform and only um, uh, authorized persons have access uh, to that um, platform. Uh, that's all from me. Thank you, Chair. Um, our management team will present further. Thank you. Um, uh, thanks, um, uh, Chair of the Board. Uh, I will give a, um, a high-level highlight of uh, our uh, Oh, but you see, we can't hear you. You are intimate. Uh, can you hear us now, Chair? Hello, yes, Chair, can you hear us now? Yes, continue. Uh, our, uh, internet. At the products which we are developing as uh, OBP. What I need to emphasize is that uh, OBP 
it does not do from uh, uh, ARC so to a fully Sorry, Chairperson, uh, we can't hear anything. Yeah, we can't hear anything uh, that uh, Bob Matusi is saying. Can we be assisted? Yeah. Uh, Honorable Chair, can you hear from my uh, computer? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, I'll ask uh, the, doc the doctor to speak from my computer. Thank you. Well, members of uh, the committee, apologies uh, for that. Um, I was uh, indicating that uh, OBP does not... Uh, Recording in progress. Uh, what we do, we, take, we get technologies from uh, different uh, uh, third parties and then we develop them into products. I was indicating that we do have got uh, a product which we are talking about, which we are developing um, with the ARC. The product is the uh, heart water vaccine. And we are at a clinical trial of this um, product. And also there's a product which we are developing for the disease called snog stick or malignant cataract fever. This is the technology which we sourced from um, Scotland Moradan uh, Institute. And also we do have a new vaccine against African host sickness, which we are developing, which is based on the new technologies, which is an inactivated um, uh, technology. Apart from new products, we also do have uh, new technologies which are rapid, which we are developing. Uh, OBP currently uses a lot of animals when we do our um, uh, 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 tests of our, of our batches to release the vaccines. But these new molecular technologies, uh, which are based on quantitative PCR, they will result in um, repeat in around time, and the time which we require to test our vaccines will be uh, shortened. The technologies that are developed for, for both bacterial and viral vaccines. Uh, apart from the new technologies and the new vaccines, we are also uh, bringing new products which were initially registered, which were no longer in the market, back into the market. We have got a new product such as uh, the Clammy Show for abortion in cattle, which uh, we have brought back to the market. A new vaccine um, based on Rift Belly Vaccine 18 to be another vaccine over and above the two Rift Belly vaccines which we have in the market. And we have also improved the process for the production of uh, the blue tongue uh, vaccine. This will enable our batch failures to be to be reduced. Uh, uh, thanks, um, uh, Chair. Chair, what, Chairperson, it's it's the acting CEO, it's the interim CEO. Yeah. Uh, Chair, thanks, Chairperson, and the members. What we've done, Chair, I think, for the benefit of the committee, uh, is that we've put out uh, slides analyzing the fire the last five years of the vaccines that we've we've produced. On the slide that you are seeing on in front of you, Chair, you will note that uh, uh, our production has always been, in the last five years, in average, more than the sales that we've made. I'll, I'll, I'll move to the next slide, Chair, perhaps the, the third last slide, just to say, Chair, that in 2019, uh, uh, you will note that uh, we had a lot of uh, blue tongue that we sold you. The members, the, 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 the chair and, and the committee members would recall that was the year that we had a huge export uh, to the Middle East of our, of our ship in the country. So there was a lot of vaccination that was taking place at that time, Chair. Chair, I must indicate that uh, uh, 2021 had its own challenges uh, by and large, Chair, as a function of, of, of one, our aging infrastructure, but in a big way, Chair, because our products that we sell at OBP uh, are actually uh, freeze dry. 
uh, and therefore the the, the 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 load shedding that we experienced in 2021 had a huge uh, impact on on a lot of our products including uh, uh, in particular the bacterial uh, products such as such as uh, pasteurella uh, black water and and beef mineral products chair. so what we've done in the in the three slides that you are having in front of you chair, my CFO would move to the next slide and the next slide we're doing that analysis for for the benefit of the of the committee chair. Chair, because of time, I'm gonna I'm gonna go straight to our performance uh, for the last three quarters, and our CFO will take us through that performance for the last uh, three quarters. Chair, thank you. Uh, thank you. Good morning, uh, honourable chair. Good morning, honourable members. Uh, my name is Elspeth Davendam, the CFO at OBP. I uh, will take the committee through the summary of our uh, performance uh, report for the <coughs> period ended December. Uh, we have generated uh, a revenue of 146 million uh, against 161 from prior year and also against 159 from the budget that we had in place. Uh, fortunately, if we look at our gross profit line, we are sitting at 98 million against 91 million from last year. So we have implemented uh, efficiencies around our inventory management and that has yielded results, although our revenue figures have decreased. And we have put in place in the last quarter a robust sales strategy. And we are hoping that by the end of the fourth quarter, we'll have achieved our budget of 190 million. And as of now, we are working towards that and it is looking uh, fruitful. We then look at uh, operating expenses. We're sitting at 90 million. Uh, last year, we were sitting at 109 million. Our budget was 121 million. Uh, in effect, uh, our cost management strategies are working. Uh, our operating profit is sitting at 11 million as at the end of the quarter. Last year, same time, we're sitting at a loss of 15 million. We had budgeted for a loss of 3 million. Overall profit, we are sitting year to date at 23 million. Last year, we're sitting at a loss of 13 million. Our budget was a profit of 19 million. So a significant increase in how our trading position is. We have a brief summary that is looking at uh, overall sales 97% of the cells that are generated by OBP are from vaccine cells, and only 3% come from other income, which is listed below. We have shown a comparison for prior year and for this year. We have also looked at our market share, which is critical. In terms of uh, RAND value, uh, we're looking at 50% of cells are coming from the local market and 50% from export market. But what I'd like to clarify is that the actual doses that we uh, percentage uh, that we administer to the animals is 70% locally and 30% externally. We have fortunately uh, had the opportunity of having um, a rand gain in terms of pricing from the export market. And that's why the anomaly in terms of uh, percentage in value. We have then explained just a, a, a different aspects of our income. Uh, however, we looked at the key fixed costs. Those are payroll, we're sitting at 69 million, which is within budget. Our repairs and maintenance, which is critical as we have advised that we have aging infrastructure, uh, depreciation of our assets, um, animal feed, and just energy that is critical to our manufacturing plant. <clears throat> These have been explained in detail uh, following that as key areas that we are focusing on. We will note that our repairs and maintenance for the quota was overspent, uh, and we are working towards um, different uh, maintenance plans that might increase our budget in the coming year. And this has been recently approved by the board, but we are aware why our spend was higher it's because of the aging infrastructure, and we are trying to ensure that we continue production. I will then look at our overall performance in terms of our uh, annual performance plan. For quarter one, our achievement was 35%. For 
For quarter two, it was 50%. For quarter three, it was 53%. There is concerted effort for us to achieve most of our targets within quarter four, but we, we have to allude that we might find weaknesses in HR, and these will uh, in turn um, be worked on in the new quarter, which would be quarter one of the new financial year. We work with four programs. The first program is to increase our revenue so it looks at financial sustainability as an organization. And under that, we look at increasing our revenue, new products, our product dossiers that are submitted for approval, increasing our EBITDA, and increasing our vaccine sold. We've shown quarter one, quarter two, and quarter three, since we are reporting on quarter three, we have explained the variance, the reasons, and the action plans that we are looking at. We are then going to look at our second program, which is continuous improvement of business pro processes. And we want to ensure the supply of improved quality products to the market. We then look at production efficiency, progress on the GMP roadmap. We then look at our ICT enterprise architecture plan, the vector proof facility, GMP facility, and the top 20 products Can that conclude? we use as an entity. Our third program is customer service, and we're looking to provide excellent customer service. The key areas we are focusing on is satisfied customers. Uh, this looks at complaints being resolved and customer satisfaction, the retention of customers, new distribution channels, and training of farmers on the ground. Our final program is governance and leadership, where we want to drive an ethical and accountable corporate culture. Key areas that we'll be looking at is board approved policies. We are looking at staff retention, uh, working with employees on a culture survey and implementing any uh, outcome of that survey and training our staff to ensure that we have a competent staff complement. We then looking at our audit improvement plan tracking register. We have implemented a tracking register that is presented to the board quarterly and management continuously work on improving and implementing all actions across. We have shown it in detail. As of the third quarter, we had three external audit findings outstanding, and these uh, should be finalized before year end. In terms of internal audit findings, we had uh, six internal audit findings, and we may not uh, complete all the external audit finding, uh, internal audit findings is at year end, but within the first quarter, uh, and with stability being introduced into HR, we should have closed those in the first quarter. Thank you, Honorable Chair. Thank you, CFO. Honorable members, there's the presentation of the OPP. We will now take questions of clarity on both presentations, that of NAMEC and the OPP. Honorable State. Thank you, Chairperson. Uh, Chairperson, do you mind if I switch off my uh, video? I think it's on my phone. I had a problem with my laptop. Yeah, please do. We all technology challenge today. Go ahead. Yes. Thank you, Chair. Chairperson, um, I only have some comments and questions on OBP. Chair, firstly, I, I really believe that this committee needs to do a proper oversight over OBP. I will tell you why, Chair. Uh, I'm, I'm inundated with calls from people who are telling me there is something massively wrong at the OBP. And every time we get presentations, it sounds also a bit fine. Although they do acknowledge that there is internal problems. But the effect that the OBP has on the livestock industry in South Africa is playing a massive role, Chair, and I really do believe that we need to improve our oversight. I also want to say, Chairperson, that we need proper details of everything that we are just being brushed over every time that we're having meetings with this um, uh, entity. And I want to take an example, Chairperson, of the uh, um, 
vaccine development. It must have been in 2011 or 2012 when we first asked serious questions about OBP and vaccine development. And since then, we constantly hear that they're busy developing uh, African war sickness vaccine. And I'm just making one example because I can remember that one clearly. There was uh, lots of horses dying in the country at that stage. Chair, so I would like to um, also say that when we met with them last time, I asked them which vaccines is currently available and which not because we received numerous schools of people that say that the vaccines is not available. We were told, no, the vaccines were available. We will receive the list. We've never received that list, Chairperson. So I am a bit, you know, tired of hearing stories constantly, but we can't do proper oversight over the OBP. So Chairperson, I would like us to, to do proper oversight of OBP, go and visit them, go and see what's going on, see for ourselves what's happening there and get proper details on what is happening in OBP. Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you, Honorable Sting. We'll uh, also appreciate uh, that you finish the committee with uh, the details of the complaints on the OPP so we can all be well versed. It assists when we uh, engage with these uh, matters as a collective so that we can all come uh, to get uh, the conclusive matters that we seek. Uh, so I will encourage you to uh, finish us uh, with uh, the complaints that uh, are being submitted on the OPP uh, through the Secretariat. Let us uh, move on uh, to uh, Honorable Muntwedi. Were you able to get on the platform? I saw him uh, asking to be allowed into the meeting. Honorable Muntwedi. Uh, Honorable Member Shaw. <clears throat> Honorable Chairperson, I have got just a few questions um, on the two presentations. Are we dealing with them both? Yes, you can ask questions on both the presentations. Thank you. Okay. The, 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 the first presentation that came before the OB, they talked about uh, the Transformation Committee review. Uh, which uh, uh, which was talking about uh, the, the 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 underspending of six six point seven million, if I had it correctly, on power investment due to COVID nineteen. I just wanted to get a clarity on 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 how the turnaround strategy is going to be look like. Uh, and then they also talked about the trust no longer uh, collecting revenue. On that also, one would like to get uh, that turnaround strategy on how they're going to make sure that uh, they come on par to re-collect uh, revenue for the trust. And they talked about 20 emerging farmers out of nine farmers on high uh, fresh producers that they've assisted. Can we be able to get that 29 farmers that are being assisted so that we can be able to do our oversight work? And they also talked about 39 farmers in, 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 in quarter two. We need the names of those, quarter, uh, or, or the, of those farmers so that we can do our oversight work, which I think it will be the best. On, OBV, o, o, on OBP, uh, if I'm calling it correct, they talked about uh, the underspending of 37 million. They, I, I, I was just requesting to be informed why that 37 million that was underspent, what is going to happen to it and what happened to it? And why did they underspend on that? They need to uh, uh, inform us. And the lastly, Chair, is the issue of 0.7 million also, which is what was also underspent. The clarity seeking question is needed on that. Why and how are they going to make sure that they recover that? Thank you, Chairperson. I'm done. Thank you, Honorable Marshal. Akbar Thank you, Voorzitter. 
Uh, Chairperson, maybe to start out with um, the OBP, um, some of OBP's report audit findings um, were in terms of non-compliance with the PFMA, non-compliance with SEM processes, um, who expended to management, um, as well as internal control deficiencies. Um, in light of all of this and the budgetary um, constraints, um, can OBP maybe indicate to us in terms of the investigations on a UIFW expenditure um, that was ongoing from November 2021 um, and those that have been reported to SUPS, how far have these investigations been? Have they been finalized and what are the outcomes thereof? Um, I think that that is necessary to find that out so that we can see necessary consequence management. Um, and then chairperson, maybe just in terms of two issues um, for NAMAC, um, can they provide an update on the implementation of recommendations of the investigation report that was issued in uh, February 2021 on suspected fraud, corruption and conflict of interest on the procurement and contract management relating to the agriculture um, and agro-processing master plan? Um, and can they further indicate whether the action has been taken against the relevant or implicated staff members? Um, and chairperson, uh, maybe as well, um, in, in due course, after the minister has been briefed, um, maybe the committee can also be briefed on the findings of the special task team, um, including proposals to resolve the challenges that are faced by the board of the Winter Serial Trust. Um, I think that is, that is also quite relevant, chairperson, um, but that is all then from my side. Thanks. Thank you, Akbar Ebret. Uh, Honorable Mem Mahatsi. The Honorable Mem Mahatsi. The Honorable Tape. Are you back online? Yes, Chair, thanks. <laughs> I managed to, to log in. It's a challenge this morning. Yeah, Let's, <laughs> having that. Let me greet you, Chair, the colleagues and um, the department representatives and boards that are here entities. Chair, let me start with um, the last one, OBP, and support the need to go for an oversight. I'm looking at our last notes in May 2021, where we spoke about the issues, challenges of risk management within OBP, the stability that was resolved for sure in terms of your board, in terms of your personnel, the ability even to produce vaccines. And my colleagues has indicated the challenges that we have always found in OBP, though there are presentations like that. Even the presenter, when she concludes, she's talking about the inability to deal with the other issues of the audit action plan by end of the year. So I support, Chair, that we need to really go physically and see what is happening in OBP. On NAMEC, Chair, I just want to check Jay from NAMEC. But how does the market trends as they presented in the agricultural sector affecting the food prices? Is there any impact, especially locally? I'm looking at issues of COVID-19. I'm looking at issues of weather patterns and our growing population in South Africa. But uh, is there an impact in that regard? And uh, they also alluded to some commodities that uh, they are targeting. But I want to check, but in terms of the local food availability, not only security, which commodities are very key for us as a country? And what are you doing as NAMEC to ensure that such commodities are available? We're not running short of. There was a slide that they had, they flighted, yeah, workforce planning. In as much as they have appointed personnel, 
there's middle column shows contract applications or uh, appointments. Why contract? Are you not going to need these uh, positions in the long term? How is it going to affect you? Because even the last positions there, it's like they had to reappoint those uh, people that they appointed. So I don't buy the story on preferential procurement targets. That could not be met. The presenter is saying on this one, they are even reviewing this target moving forward. It cannot be correct. If there's a quota or reinvest monies for preferential procurement for vulnerable groups, that money must be spent on them. Now, if you revise, what do you mean? Are you saying you're no longer going to set those monies aside? As a marketing entity, what are you doing to market this uh, a service to the people living with disabilities, for an example, because chair, these are organized sectors. We have in desks within municipalities, we have in programs that are mainstreaming within provinces in all departments. Now, if NAMA cannot go out in as much as they are meeting farmers, then just set time aside and saying we are meeting these kind of service providers, and they come here and say they're gonna revise this target. It doesn't sit well with us, and that should not be the case. I want to know what is happening now on this one that was not met. Is this money returning? And what are your plans moving forward? Because this one of revising that target, I'm not buying chair. Something has to be done decisively to get to the service providers that falls under this uh, vulnerable groupings. Thanks, chair. Thank you, Honorable uh, Tabe. Honorable Muntwedi. Honorable Muntwedi. Honorable Memato. I mean, the Memasati. Honorable Member Tati. Thank you very much, Chair. I'm covered. You covered. Thank you, Honorable Members. Is there any other Honorable Member on the platform whom I've not recognized? If not, uh, Honorable Members, as uh, we've uh, had only 50% of audit findings from 2020, 2021 have been resolved by NEMEC. What assurance can we be given as a portfolio committee by NEMEC that the other half will be resolved by the end of next month when the financial year comes to an end? Honorable members, uh, NAMEC uh, should uh, indicate to the portfolio committee the implications of the challenges in the winter serial trust, particularly the non-collection of levies for the winter serial industry. We would also like uh, NAMEC to indicate how much is the total irregular expenditure that was incurred in the previous financial years for which it has requested condonation from National Treasury. And what uh, measures is it going to take in that regard? Honorable members, in 2020 and 2021, NEMEC incurred about 30.2 million rents in total irregular, fruitless, and wasteful expenditure and, and unauthorized expenditure. Of the amount, how much was fruitless and wasteful expenditure and what disciplinary measures have been taken against, uh, against them? Uh, or against those responsible within NAMAC. 
if I may then come to the presentation of OBP honorable members. Instability at the management level was observed to be a contributing factor to the OBP's poor performance in the previous financial year when the entity ended the year with the CEO on suspension and without an HR manager, which resulted in zero achievement of targets in the human resource management and development program. Honorable members, for the third quarter, third quarters, for the three quarters, uh, it reported in the year under review, performance is still not satisfactory, and there is little progress that has been made in addressing HR-related audit findings. And the reason is mostly due to a change in HR management that has destabilized the unit. Can the OBP indicate whether the HR manager has been appointed? If so, when has the appointment been made? And can the entity provide assurance that the outstanding matters will be resolved by the end of the financial year, which is next month. Honorable members, the OBP ended the previous year with a high vacancy rate of 26%, which also impacted its performance and operations. What is the current vacancy rate within the OBP? Besides the CEO method that is with the CCMA, are there any other critical management positions that are vacant? Honorable members, in the previous year, lockdown restrictions and the dispute with the supplier were cited as reasons for not achieving 100% completion of phase one and 50% completion of phase two of the GMP facility, which has referred to a legal process, which was uh, referred to a legal process. Can the OBP indicate whether that legal process with the supplier has been finalized? If not, how far is it? Additionally, honorable members, in light of the challenge with the previous supplier, how is the OBP continuing with the GMP project and how does it plan to prevent further delays due to supplier or service provider related challenges? Noting the, show pro the slow progress in addressing SCM-related findings in the audit improvement plan. That is all on my side, honorable members. We will now hand over uh, to NEMEC to uh, give responses and then uh, conclude with the OBP. NEMEC, you may proceed. Uh, thank you, honorable chair. Uh, we have noted all the questions and we will start by answering those that pertain to uh, executive management. And there is one question that I think the chairperson and the vice chairperson of the board will, will attend to, the, the one regarding the investigation, uh, uh, maybe at the end of our responses as management. I will start by uh, saying, Chair, that in terms of uh, uh, the detail, details of the farmers that we have assisted uh, with market access, uh, we, we will, we will uh, uh, avail that report, the detailed report in terms of uh, th those farmers so that the honorable members can do the, the necessary oversight. And then secondly, uh, with regards to the, the issues uh, pertaining to the Winter Cereals Trust, uh, Honorable Briet uh, requested that we avail the report uh, of the task team looking at the affairs of the trust, which is due uh, to be presented to the minister uh, uh, first. And uh, following that, uh, we will um, then uh, 
uh, get the minister's guidance in terms of uh, uh, presenting it uh, uh, with, with the committee. I do not foresee any challenges there, Chair. Uh, but if the DG perhaps uh, would like to come in on that one, uh, uh, Chair, uh, through you, he, he can also add. Um, Chair, I will also um, just touch on, 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 the, on the other issues that, uh, that were raised. Uh, maybe without getting into too much detail uh, regarding the Winter Cereals Trust, uh, which is undergoing uh, challenges, uh, we indicated that they are at a stage where they are not able to collect levies. Um, obviously, that will have an impact in terms of the, um, the activities that are usually supported uh, through proceeds, uh, sorry, through those, uh, the, the funding that the Winter Cereal Trust oversees from, uh, through the levies. Uh, there is currently a, a development which is not ideal where there is a, a, a trust that has been established, uh, a, a voluntary trust that is currently um, handling some of the activities of the, of the winter cereal industry. Uh, all the stakeholders do agree that uh, this is not an ideal situation and we need to sort out the uh, issues of the statutory uh, winter cereal trust um, so that uh, we can come back to um, the Winter Cereals Trust managing its its um, you know its its, its affairs, uh, where uh, statutory levies are being collected and so on, Chair. But those details are contained in the report that we will present to the minister, and later on uh, we will we will then uh, come to the to the committee to present uh, those details in terms of the um, the recommendations that we are making to the minister. Uh, Chair, I'm going to ask my colleagues to just uh, respond on some of the questions, the, the senior managers. Can I ask uh, Mr. Nyoto to respond on the issue of the, the decrease in the value of the, of the trust asset um, and any other matter that you would like to just add regarding the trust issues? Do you, Chair? Uh, thank you, uh, CEO. Uh, Good morning, uh, Honourable Chair, Honourable Members, uh, members of the board and um, colleagues. Uh, the, 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 the decline in the asset was because of the performance of uh, the investment portfolios. And those investment portfolios were the assets uh, in terms of uh, the, the funds fund managers are, are invested. So because of the situation of COVID and the performance of the uh, stock exchanges across the world, because of the pandemic dropping, they invest, the value of those investments dropped. On the side of the buildings, uh, the warehouses that are owned by some of these uh, trusts, because uh, these trusts are earning uh, Rental incomes uh, uh, from uh, those, the occupancy rate and uh, the the of 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 these assets dropped because some of the businesses were under financial strain. So the reason why the assets uh, declined by the 64 million thereabout was because of the two reasons that I have provided, and I think. Uh, the other question that was raised uh, in respect of uh, uh, the, the transformation work. The transformation uh, work is uh, continuing uh, 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 well. And actually what we have seen even on the side of the statutory measures from the, the, the 20 minimum of 20% that should be set aside as a condition of approval for transformation increased from 19% uh, to 21%. So with, uh, with that happening, uh, and I'm sure the, the, the honorable members, uh, if uh, at a given point in time, they would want to see uh, these initiatives that are driven by these industries, I'm sure the NAMC would be available to facilitate that. There are exciting developments, uh, whilst they are concerning uh, areas uh, around uh, different industries, but uh, the industries, some are doing quite well on transformation front. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Mr. Nyad. Um, if if uh, Ms. Uh, Dr. Christo, you back and respond on the 
uh, the, the status of food availability as well as the, the, the food price trends uh, going forward. Thank you, um, CEO, and also a good day to all the honorable members. Yes, if we look currently at our food supply, if we start it with our grains, uh, we're actually sitting in a very nice position as, as uh, my CEO reported. We're probably going to export around about 3.8 million tons of maize um, before the end of April. Uh, this will um, bring in a lot of foreign exchange for the country. Uh, we're sitting on a <coughs> daily stock level at the end of our marketing se season of around about 80 days stock. It seems that, that the country um, flooding problems is in a, in a way resolved and that we're probably going to sit with a very nice crop, um, maybe the second or the third largest crop, rain sort, it, uh, sort himself out. Um, the one concern that we have is tension in the Ukraine and also Russia. We normally import around about 30% of, of our wheat from, from those two countries. Uh, but yes, we need to, we, we monitor the situation and we need to look at that, but there will probably be other suppliers like the US and also Europe, where we can import some of the maize. In terms of food prices, we can expect that food prices will rise. Um, I don't believe that we're going to see food inflation as uh, increases as we saw um, when we have the drought a few years back. Um, but yes, we have the increase in fertilizer prices and also the increase in uh, fuel. Um, we can expect that we, our food, food inflation will, will increase. Availability, um, infrastructure plays a huge role, especially to get food to the rural areas. But yes, that's on a different level um, to get the food to the people and also that it's affordable. Um, my CEO also reported that um, grain prices is at this stage very high and we do not foresee that that will um, lower or globally very high, but that will decrease at this stage. But yes, the country is in a food security and sustainability position um, that uh, we do not foresee any problems at this stage. And we're monitoring it closely. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Hubert. Uh, just to add, in terms of food price monitoring, we do this on a monthly as well as quarterly basis. There's a 28 item basket that we, uh, that we monitor. Uh, on an on, on ongoing, ongoing basis. And as uh, Dr. Hubert has indicated, uh, the, the trajectory is currently upward because of the uh, fuel uh, and fertilizer price, prices, the impact of that. And we're gonna likely, we are likely to see even more impact because of the global factors that uh, Dr. Hubert has, has mentioned. Um, in terms of the question that uh, Honorable Tlape uh, raised regarding the commodities that we uh, prioritize, um, uh, besides the 28-item uh, food basket at retail level, we, we monitor uh, all the major grains in terms of availability uh, and the stock levels on a monthly basis. That is your maize, your wheat, your sunflower, and, and uh, wheat, and, and so on, those, those major grains. And we, and we produce uh, a monthly report on, on, on that. In terms of ensuring that the, the supply stays stable, uh, it, it, is slightly, it is out of our mandate. Uh, this is the, the work that uh, the department and the province uh, uh, does. However, we, the information that we produce uh, ends up uh, uh, at the department from a policy making point of view, uh, as we provide advice uh, through, through, through that information that we provide. Chair, if I may ask, uh, on regarding the human capital questions, uh, the senior manager human capital is going to uh, is going to respond uh, through you, Chair. Ms. Melani. Thank you, Chair. Go ahead, Good Ms. Morning. Milani. Thank you, thank you, CEO. Uh, with regards to the human resources questions that was asked. Uh, with regards to fixed term contracts, uh, four positions uh, within uh, the the second column chairperson they are largely uh, approved on the current structure that has been recently approved. But unfortunately, we have challenges there also because 
the structure has been approved uh, on non-funded basis, where as an organization, we would need to basically look for funding to ensure that we are able to resource the structure accordingly. And then one position that we do have there is the research uh, assistant, which is in collaboration with Casava, which is a project chairperson. It, it has got a start date and an end date. And unfortunately, we cannot absorb any further, any further employees around that one. And then the last one, Jefferson, which is the NRMDP, also the contracts were put in place in December and then the end date is February, with the hope that they will then be allocated to the ARC. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, and finally, from our side as management, uh, Honorable Chair, if uh, CFO can respond on the, on the questions around preferential procurement, uh, irregular, irregular expenditure, as well as the, the audit findings. And then uh, chairperson to you, uh, the, I think the, our, our chairperson of the board and the vice chairperson will respond regarding the investigation. CFO. Okay, thank you. Thank you, CEO. Yes, I will start with the first question on the preferential procurement targets. So the challenge there is uh, our budget is limited. So this is the procurement uh, for our operational uh, expenditure that we have to go out and uh, procure for the needs of, of the organization. So that's why I'm highlighting challenges, especially because some of these uh, procurements that are done through the bids some are, so it's not a targeted procurement. In as much as uh, the supply chain uh, officials, they do a check on the central supplier database that is managed by Treasury. However, you find that for that particular commodity that they are procuring, the suppliers, especially for people with disability, you find that we, 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 they are really struggling to, to find suppliers in that category. So that's the challenge that we, we, we are uh, uh, just highlighting. There might be in other uh, uh, commodities, but for the commodities that we, we, we have been given the limited budget also for operational expenses. So that's, I, I, I hear what the, the honorable member is saying. Hence, this was a, 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 you know, a target that was put in our annual performance plan. However, it's, it's, it's posing a challenge when it comes to implementation. So that, that's, that's the response on that. But we are trying our best to ensure that we do, we, we do get uh, service providers and or supplier in, in, in those categories. And with regard to the assurance, with, it, uh, as, uh, with regard to the audit action plan to say, we are current, we are at 50% as at the end of the third quarter. Are we gonna, what assurance are we giving to the members? Yes, there is progress. It's, it's unfortunate to say at, as at the end of the third quarter, we, we haven't really achieved 100%, but uh, we, 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 we are, uh, we, with the, 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 the processes that we are putting in place, we know that by end of the financial year, we will be at 100% because, for example, with the issue of assets, we this was uh, the, the disclosure in the annual financial statements. And we are currently working on that to ensure that our asset register is complete, is reconciled to the figure that we'll present in the financial statements will be an accurate figure. With regard to the other issue like the internal control deficiencies, we have put measures in place to ensure that uh, our accounts are reconciled on a monthly basis. We do have supporting documentation. And by the time when the auditors are on board, all those things will be presented. And uh, that's the area where we will ensure that we, we do not have a repeat findings. And with the issues of the policy, uh, we risk and compliance manager has just been appointed in January, and that was the first task that she worked on. So the policy will be a, a, a available at the time at the time of audit. And the financial statements, currently we are reviewing 
a we are preparing financial uh, management accounts monthly, and by the end of the financial year, it, that will minimize the, the the misstatements and the incomplete disclosures. So those are the the areas that uh, we 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 are having that assurance that come end of the financial year, which is next month, we, we will be a, a hundred percent implementation. With regard to the question on irregular expenditure to say, what is the total of irregular expenditure? The total is at end of the financial year 2020-21, it's 147,990,000. So this is the irregular expenditure that has been incurred over the years of which it was never condoned. Uh, NAMC has been aligning with National Treasury and that irregular expenditure was not being condoned. We are meeting with National Treasury to just e express the difficulties that we are also encountering, especially when it comes to the, to, to the consequence management, because as an institution, we've got a legal opinion that says uh, 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 no one is accountable. And uh, also, most of the, 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 the staff members, they are no longer with the organization. I think one colleague mentioned here that legally is a challenging now to start uh, saying you can follow up on people. One of the measures that management has implemented is the training because uh, consequence management also can take a form of training. So is to ensure that staff are trained to prevent the reoccurrence of the of the irregular expenditure so that's another element however we we are in discussion with the national treasury we we are meeting with them by next week just to get to to the bottom of of this uh, irregular expenditure as at the end of the previous financial year we didn't have uh, any fruitless and wasteful expenditure and uh, also, I think another question was unauthorized. We also don't have unauthorized expenditure. So I think I have addressed the questions on that one. Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you, CFO. Uh, we will now allow our, our Chairperson and Vice Chair to conclude uh, through you, Honorable Chair. Uh, thank you, Sampiwe. Uh, thank you, uh, Chairperson. Uh, Chairperson, uh, obviously, you know, these are some of the legacy issues that we as the current board are trying to clear out and refocus the organization. And um, part of what we do is that uh, there will definitely be consequence management if compliance or protocols are not followed. Um, the challenge, however, is uh, clearing and dealing with stuff that happened um, prior to our term of office. Um, but nonetheless, we're in office now and we need to make sure that we are able to handle and clear um, the legacy issues. I'm, I'm going to request the Deputy Chairperson to respond on the IMP uh, um, as uh, she was uh, in charge of a ship at that stage and I was obviously um, on on leave on leave of absence, I will come in if if need be. Deputy Chairperson, can you please respond? Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, good morning to the honourable members, colleagues, um, as well as heads of the other entities reporting to the Department of Agriculture, colleagues. Um, with regards to the issues relating to the AAMP, the main ultimate allegations that were the outcomes of that investigation or the allegations were particularly related to administrative issues insofar as processes and irregular expenditure conducted by NAMC employees, which were listed in the report. As indicated by the CFO, there has been some staff attrition over the past two, three years um, following to um, all of these events regarding both the AAMP and the Red Meat Program. 
As far as this council that was appointed and started their term in March, when we received sight of these particular issues and we were tasked with the responsibility of closing off and, and finalizing these investigations, we initially made the decision to particularly focus on HR related matters as this was our conclusion as um, the council and the committee. We subsequently tasked the HR um, committee to, to evaluate the substantive nature of these allegations, but also then the follow-up was the procedural matters associated with it. Uh, um, chair and uh, committee members, this particular matter um, was concluded by the previous audit and risk chairperson, Ms. Lerato Matau. And there was a very extensive investigation report associated with it, which unfortunately the current council members were not privy to in its full extent and completeness of attachments, annexures, and documents, considering that only one document was produced and submitted to the audit and risk chairperson. We have subsequently made attempts to receive and retrieve that document in order for us to follow through on the processes of disciplinary hearing, as it's the primary outcome of consequence management that would ultimately put this matter to bed. Um, unfortunately, colleagues, we were not able to get that document, um, and Ms. Um, Motau had indicated that she no longer was in possession of it, and we were not in a position to follow up on the original author, as the author has also subsequently resigned and left the organization. On other matters, um, I think it's important to highlight that there were no service providers appointed in so far as the AAMP um, program was concerned. Also, the other issue was um, a matter of delegations and decision-making um, as far as appointments were concerned. And the response to that is that uh, Professor Gobel was directly appointed by the minister at a departmental level and not necessarily the NAMC. Um, and the outcome of our investigation as the HR committee in conjunction and assistance with the audit committee came out with a recommendation to council that uh, there were no further possible um, means to conclude any consequence management as far as disciplinary processes are concerned. One, because many members that were cited in the report have left the organization. Secondly, we now face the challenge of being able to safely and with absolute surety be able to protect and um, secure any procedural fulfillment and procedural alignment with labor laws if we were to pursue this matter. Um, thank you, colleagues. Chairperson, I'll hand over to you if there are any matters you would like to further highlight. Thank you. Thank you very much, Chair. There would be no further input from me on, on this stage. Thank you. Thank you, uh, honorable members. Those are responses uh, from uh, NAMEC. Let us proceed uh, to the responses on the OPP presentation. Chair, if I may. Um, with regards to, to the request uh, or the discussion that portfolio committee members will have on the oversight of the OBP um, management, uh, uh, the board and management will take its cue from, from portfolio committee, but um, we we quite open to, to that happening at the time that's convenient for portfolio committee. Chair, I must just raise the, the issue that um, in the last while, there has been um, what appears to be many conspiracy theories around what's happening at the OBP, and this has led to, to the OBP being inundated with with um, uh, queries by the media, uh, some of which includes, but are not limited to, for example, the issues around uh, limited 
uh, or, or the, the unavailability of some of our products, we acknowledge that um, whilst our, our um, sales value chain um, is not as effective as it should be, um, our sales team has been able to track some of our, our products in, in areas where um, uh, people were previously told that they're not available or non-existent. Um, of course, there is an issue if you do call the OBP now and ask for a specific vaccine, our officers may tell you that we don't have, and it's true. Um, and that's because when we produce, we try and get that out to, to um, the market as, as quickly as they are ready for distribution. The other challenges that, that we are experiencing, and we're working quite closely with um, Act 36 and, and the Department of, of um, the Directorate of Animal Health uh, within the department, is the issues around the, um, uh, the, the purported um, uh, seed materials that um, over a period of time may have disappeared and as a result, vaccines have been produced and are awaiting approval. Of course, um, Act 36, um, in, in, it, in terms of its uh, responsibilities, um, does um, communicate uh, with, with the OBP as and when these do arise. And um, because there are, of course, transfer agreements, et cetera, that, that has to be entered into with the applicants of the dossiers, et cetera. So, so there are quite a few challenges, Chair, uh, but the board um, will await further um, uh, information or confirmation from Portfolio Committee with regards to, to the site visit that, that a Portfolio Committee may want to conduct. Um, I will request that management responds to some of the other uh, questions that were raised, Chair, just to say on the underspending of 30.7 million uh, included in that 30.7 30 million, um, that 30.7 million isn't only underspending, but it's also 14.9 million of that amount relates to um, savings as a result of our cost containment measures. Um, and then in terms of the, uh, I think it, it's uh, management can respond to the, to the other um, questions raised by portfolio committee. And um, if there's anything else, um, I, I can then conclude at the end. Thank you, Chair. Chair, Chair Honorable Ngozi, Chair, uh, through you and, and the members, just, just to take a couple of questions, Chair, just to, to assure Honorable Stain that we do have animal hot sickness. As, as early as uh, last Monday, we produced a batch of animal hot sickness, and that is in the market, Chair. Chair, with respect to, to, to the matter about uh, the vacancy rate, with respect to management, there's only one executive uh, the management vacancy that we have. Uh, of course, we've, we've, the, the chair has alluded to the, to the, uh, to the CEO's uh, vacancy. The only one that we, ha we have in our midst, Chair, out of a total of six executives, is the executive that is responsible for corporate services that we are currently uh, about to go to the market to look for. It's a, very, it's, a, it's a role chair that was approved in 2018, between 2018 and 2022 uh, chair, uh, the, there was a, 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 an exercise that in essence chair undermined that role. Uh, before this board came into 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 office in 2021, we've resuscitated that role of of, of an executive for 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 for, for corporate services chair, and we're about to go to the market after after job evaluation to to look for that uh, candidate. With respect to the HR manager chair, uh, we had appointed earlier this year an HR manager. Within six months, the, the candidate resigned. We, we managed to go through an agency and re, and 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 got a a temp to to fill that role whilst we were recruiting. Whilst we were recruiting, chair in, in November 2021, we had found a good candidate. That candidate negotiated with us on salary. Uh, after we had agreed to the salary, chair, it looks like that candidate 
took that salary to his employer down in, in case at then Devon in particular and decided to get a a, 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 a counter offer in that respect. As, as a responsible management uh, chair, we decided uh, strategically so to request the department to, to loan us or to second to us one of its experienced seasoned HR uh, uh, chief directors who's now at OBP and is working together with the existing executive management to make sure that we stabilize the environment uh, and then we will go to the market after we've we, we are sure Chair, that the, the environment is, is stabilized by a seasoned executive HR practitioner, Chair. Uh, chair, the, 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 the Chair has, of the board has already indicated that uh, we, we welcome the, 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 the oversight uh, initiative by, uh, by, 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 the, by, the, by the committee to come and visit OPP so that we can explain in much more detail some of these issues, Chair. Le Chair, lastly, before I hand over to the CFO to answer to the irregular and fruitless expenditure questions, what we've seen, Chair, and committee members is the fact that we produce uh, vaccines at OBP for the market. And then the, 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 the product, uh, because we don't have an access to what's on the stocks of our agencies, of the cooperatives, of the vets that are sitting there, our ultimate client, who is the farmer, doesn't know where to look for because we've sent the product out to the market. So in essence, Chair, when, the, when we say that the product is not available at OBP, it doesn't mean the product is not available in the market. And only one cooperative, agriculture cooperative, has got transparency on that. And what we're currently doing, Chair, is to look in cooperation with our agencies and cooperatives that uh, we sell through. Uh, to what extent can we have a transparent process to the ultimate farmer in terms of what's available in their shelves and where it is? Because we have got a challenge here in publicizing as to who did we sell with to, because those kinds of ours share, are, are probably going to say that we share the information that is proprietary to do to us. But we're working together with the industry chair, the National Animal Health uh, Forum. We are working very closely with. Uh, with respect to the challenges of the industry, the Department of uh, sort of the Directorate Animal Health were working very closely with the equine industry chair. We had as early as December a very productive meeting in terms of cooperation between ourselves and themselves in helping them in their export of the of the horses chair. Uh, I'll hand over now to my CFO to talk to very briefly about the issues of a fruitless expenditure that we reported the, the last time and how far the cases are with respect to the to the to the security cluster there. thank you uh, thank you honorable chair i will uh, speak to the uh, item on fruitless and wasteful expenditure and irregular expenditure that was disclosed in terms of irregular expenditure we did receive value for those uh, items that were disclosed. We have finalized our internal disciplinary processes except for uh, two instances, and we have requested condemnation from National Treasury. Uh, in the current financial year, uh, we have done a risk assessment and we have implemented risk mitigating uh, measures. And we have noted that our irregular expenditure to date has decreased in number and in value as well. We do sit with irregular expenditure of three instances uh, of a minimal value of about 80,000. We are not saying that the value is minimal because irregular expenditure should be avoided at all costs, but we are just indicating the efforts that are being put by management. In terms of fruitless and wasteful expenditure, we have no fruitless and wasteful expenditure in the current financial year. Uh, we have uh, alluded in the prior meetings that we have updated our policies. In terms of now recovery, because we have now finalized our internal disciplinary processes uh, that led to dismissals, we now have to continue with the South African Police Services, as we had indicated in our last meeting, we indicated they were investigating as recent as a month ago, we have followed up with them. They are still continuing their investigations. 
And the matter that we had highlighted to the committee was that we are looking at uh, criminal charges to be placed on the companies involved and all individuals. And that's why uh, we are awaiting a uh, sub-final um, uh, conclusion on this matter. And the head of legal at OBP is uh, pursuing this quite diligently, and we are reporting to the board. And the, the, the recent update from head of legal is that we may need to look at starting and instituting civil uh, action, but there, there obviously needs to be some uh, assessment in terms of cost and all other aspects. Uh, in terms of can we uh, conclude five minutes remaining? Five minutes remaining. Can we conclude? Uh, our structure is such that we do not receive operational grants, uh, and only our revenue supports any expenditure that we incur. So we need to remain financially sustainable. So if we do have an underspend in our instance in terms of what we've budgeted, it's more towards effectiveness in procurement cost management measures, so not unnecessarily that we are not meeting our targets. We still meet our targets, and we still uh, endeavor to meet all our performance uh, within that aspect. So our direct ratio should be what we have collected versus what we have spent in, in that aspect. However, uh, to highlight in terms of capital expenditure, it's an area that we need, uh, we do need assistance. We have uh, sent an application for capital expenditure to National Treasury. We have not received a response yet, and we are following up. Uh, and we do need that in terms of our aging infrastructure. Thank you, uh, Honorable Chair. Chair, I'm not sure if we've covered all the questions. Yes, uh, Magnosi, uh, thank you uh, for the responses. If uh, you can uh, kindly ensure both uh, yourselves as OBP and NAMEC that uh, you do send the responses in writing to the Secretariat. Uh, by uh, no later than end of next week, Friday, so that we can uh, ensure that all the questions have been covered. Should there be any, we will send uh, then uh, the outstanding questions in writing so you may respond to. Vulnerable members, due to time, let us uh, now move on to our last presentation, which is OVG. And we invite the OVG to present before the committee. How are you, Mema Luka? Unmute your microphone. You are muted. Unmute your microphone. Good morning. How are you? I'm fine. Thanks, Chair. And how are you, Honorable Chair? We're keeping well. Thank you. Okay. Please proceed. Thank you. Good morning, uh, Honorable Chairperson, Honorable Members of the PODCOM, Minister Titiza and her mini uh, Deputy Ministers in Absentia, uh, DG Ramasodi, Head of Entities. Good morning. And today, OVG is hereby to present 2021-2022 Performance Report for Quarter 1 to Quarter 3. With me today, I have <clears throat> acting COO, Ntate Tape Lomotweni, who will be presenting uh, uh, with uh, the Senior Manager of Finance and Ntate Tumelo Mukale. And also we are joined by Senior Manager of Valuations, Mayor Taini Lamini, and also uh, Senior Manager PMO, with that, I would like to invite Ntate uh, Mutsweni to present for the OVG. And Tate Ralph, can you please upload for us? Thank you. 
While uh, Ralph uh, is uploading the presentation, can I also uh, invite the ITB, I believe they are on the platform to present. If they can uh, stand ready, we'll take their presentation immediately after that of the OVG. Uh, please uh, proceed in Tatum Tsene. Thank you, Chair. Uh, good morning, uh, members of the Portfolio Committee, uh, Minister Didiza and Deputy Squatcher, Deputy Minister Squatcher in absentia. Um, uh, Ralph, are you winning with the, with uploading? Can we put it on slideshow? Thank you, Chair. As per the invitation, we are going to be dealing with the three first quarters of the of the current financial year. Um, basically, we'll deal with the sub-programs administration, valuations, operations, and then Mr. Mukalo, Senior Manager Finance, will deal with the financial report, and then we'll, we'll take questions. Next slide. Uh, next slide. So here is that slide that we continuously show uh, that shows the roadmap of our maturity as an organization. We have taken the committee through it. We think we should uh, keep it there for a while so that the committee can, can track that type of progress. Next slide. Uh, the next one is once again, uh, one of the main uh, processes within the, the OVG which looks at how and uh, the timing of our value chain as to how long we are supposed to be taking with work that our clients bring to us. Next slide. Next slide. So as per our usual legend, um, a target that is achieved uh, will, be, will be marked green and ones that are, ones that are not achieved 100%, even if they get to 99%, we still regard them as not achieved. Next slide. Uh, in terms of quarter one, we had planned to achieve eight targets. Um, we achieved a total of three and five of our targets were, were not achieved. Um, if when we go to the to the actual programs, we'll be able to talk into more detail about uh, which ones uh, were achieved and which ones were not, as well as the corrective measures there too. In quarter two, we had planned 10 targets. Um, we achieved four and we did not achieve six targets. Next slide. In the third quarter, we had planned nine targets. We, we achieved a total of four and five were not achieved. Next slide. In terms of sub-programs sub administration, um, in quarter two, in, in quarter one, the specific indicator, which is corruption and fraud prevention mechanisms implemented. This specific indicator was not planned for any achievement during quarter one in terms of the annual performance plan. In quarter two, um, the quarter two target was for two fraud and corruption awareness sessions to be held. One was with the internal staff and one was with the external uh, stakeholders. We're able to hold one with internal staff, but we're not able to hold one with external stakeholders as a result of the unavailability of cli clients. Also, we, in terms of quarter three, the draft corruption and fraud prevention policy reviewal, we were not able to appoint a risk specialist and this impacted on the planned time timeline for the review of the fraud prevention uh, policy. We have now appointed such a specialist and uh, we th these targets are no longer in, in danger insofar as uh, the annual uh, report will, will show. Uh, in terms of planned interventions, we, we do have uh, workshops planned with, with clients. We are also um, having sessions to review the fraud prevention policy, uh, which is scheduled at the ops management meeting as well as the Manco, Manco meeting. Next slide. In terms of valuations, 
uh, chair, which is the core function of the OVG, the first indicator is the percentage completion of valuations uh, requests that are submitted by clients within specified and agreed timelines. In quarter one, we were able to achieve 38% of the 100% that we had planned. In quarter two, it was 48%, in, and in quarter three, it was 58%. Uh, next slide. Uh, in terms of the reasons for deviation, uh, the technical indicator description for, for these indicators calculates valuation requests that are received for, for quarter one on the 18th of January, 2021, and to the 31st of March, 2021. 58% of the total population was completed before the reporting period, and it will not be reported on until 2021-2022 annual performance report is compiled due to the strict reporting rules contained in the TID. So at the end of the, of the um, of the year in the annual performance report will be able to bring that performance into into line that that also applies for quarter two and quarter three with uh, uh, different um, dates on which we start calculating this uh, in terms of the technical indicator description next slide the number of valuations that are being conducted by private valuers is continuing to reduce quite significantly. So the OVG has seen an, a fair measure of success in clearing this, these backlogs, and the impact of private valuers on our system is projected to reduce. We continue to contract manage the, privately, the private valuers uh, quite, quite closely. Uh, next slide. Um, the second indicator is the average number of working days taken to issue evaluation certificate. Chair will remember that um, one of the serious difficulties that we have had in the past was the amount of time that it takes for the OVG to produce evaluation certificate and a report. Um, we, we continue to improve on the average number of days that we take uh, to finalize valuations. Um, in the last three quarters, or in the three quarters under review, we have either achieved the 50 days target or we have uh, exceeded it. So in quarter one, we were on average taking 50 days. In quarter two, on average, 42 days. And in quarter three, on average, we were taking 28 days to complete the uh, valuations. Uh, next slide. Um, in so far as the third indicator is concerned, the completion of the backlog of the OVG, um, in quarter one, 46% of what was in the backlog was completed. 54% uh, we was done in quarter two and 86% in quarter three. Uh, this particular uh, target is, is not in danger. We are quite confident of clearing the, the backlog. Next slide. The reasons for deviation on the backlog uh, uh, target is as a result of delays in submitting owner representations by property owners. As members of the committee would remember, we, we still do give property owners 30 days to, to comment and submit representations on our, on our draft or provisional uh, evaluations. Mm -hmm. Access to property is, is denied from time to time for inspection purposes. There are also instances where there are delays due to inadequate information for fin finalizing the valuation, such as uh, owner's details, including de delays by private valuers in terms of submitting reports. Mm -hmm. So the planned interventions are over 90% of outstanding backlog valuations are now assigned to OVG internal valuers to expedite completion. The OVG has established a support team that monitors the backlog valuations to ensure that issues are resolved quickly. And there's a regular engagement between ourselves and the commission. Uh, to ensure that both teams are available to address key challenges. Next slide. Uh, the next uh, indicator, performance indicator, is enhanced data management capability. In Q1, we did not achieve the draft business case. Um, and the, the reason for deviation is as a result of analysis that we did 
uh, during the planning to execute the, the targets for, for this particular indicator. We resolved that the module under implementation, which we call the valuations tracking system, which is part of our enterprise resource planning system that we are busy finalizing implementation of, be adopted as the solution to enhance data management capability, as it is an enhancement to the existing valuation tracker that was sitting on, on, on Excel spreadsheets. So in quarter two, the approved solution design is achieved. And in quarter three, the VTS module has, has been implemented. Uh, next slide. Um, we are now going to operations. The purpose of their office to ensure the efficient and effective functioning of the OVG. Um, the first indicator there is number of performance valuation reports. We planned three for each of the three quarters. We achieved all of them. Next slide. Uh, the next performance indicator is percentage of compliant projects within the OVG. Um, in, in Q1, we had 25%, 40% in quarter two, and 67% in quarter three of all of our projects being compliant. Uh, that is short of the 100% uh, planned in each of the quarters. Next slide. There are three partially compliant projects as a result of delays in finalizing the review of project governance documents. The review process is being planned, uh, is being expedited to ensure that all governance, governance documents are approved, which will lead us to a 100% compliance. Next slide. Um, percentage of planned projects that uh, whose milestones have been delivered, uh, we have not achieved. In Q1, we're at 46%. 30% in Q2 and Q3, 58%. Next slide. Said that delays in completing project milestones were due to changes in resources in the, ER, in the ERP, which impacted on the completion of human capital and project management modules. Slow processing of migration data contributed to the delays in completing the deeds transition milestones. Um, planned interventions are that user acceptance testing has started for both project management and human capital modules, which should be deployed before the end of February. Capturing and processing of purchase, purchase orders for data migration has been finalized. The focus is on further processing until invoicing and reconciliation between Office of the Registrar of Deeds and the, on the ACPEC system and the OVG SAGE system is concluded before the end of uh, February. So this, this has got to do with the implementation of the ERP that we have briefed the committee on. The number of posts filled in line with the approved interim structure, uh, 41 is what we achieved in Q1. Q249 and we're 59 uh, by, by Q, Q3. We, we are short uh, in, in all of those quarters, but we are getting closer to the annual target of 67 warm bodies. Next slide. The reasons for deviation was delays in filling all targeted roles as a result of competing demands on managers, as well as the effect of resignations and rejected offers. Um, the OVG will ensure that the its recruitment plan is managed more closely. The annual target is not under threat at this point. Next slide. Um, unqualified audit opinion is a second quarter indicator, which talks to the audit opinion of the previous financial year. We were able to achieve it. Next slide. And uh, Tatum Kale will take over from here, Chairperson, with the finances. Thank you. Bear in mind, we have five minutes remaining. Proceed. Datem Gallo, uh, proceed. Thank you, Chair. Um, uh, good morning and to you, Chair, and to the honorable members. I will be quick, Chair. Um, the OVG had an allocation for 2021-22 of uh, 131.8 million, which was uh, split into compensation of employees and goods and services. Um, in terms of uh, spending for quarter one, um, 
the OVG spent 11 million of uh, 63.3 million for on compensation of employees, which uh, amounted to 17 percent spent of, of, of the budgeted amount. Goods and services, uh, 3.6 million of uh, 68.4 million, which amounted to 5 percent spent on the allocated budget. Uh, in total, uh, for quarter one, 14.6 million spent of the 131.8 million allocated, which amounted to 11% uh, of the allocated budget. Next slide, please. Uh, comparing uh, chair year on year, um, for compensation of employees in 2020, we had uh, 3.5 uh, million spent uh, compared to the current year 11 million spent with a variance of 7.5 million, uh, which shows a, a, an improvement of 212% on our spending uh, trends uh, in the current year. So goods and services uh, in the previous year, 3.8 million spent compared to 3.6. Uh, which, uh, with a variance of 250,000, <clears> which uh, shows a movement, a decline of, of 6%. Uh, overall, 7.4 uh, million spent in the pre previous year, 14.6 million spent in the current year, which shows a variance of 7.2 million with uh, an improvement of 98% uh, on, on our spending. Uh, just comments below, Chair. There is an improvement of, of COE spending as the headcount numbers are, are increasing in the OVG. The decrease in spending for goods and services can be attributed to a slow receipt of, of invoices of, of suppliers. Next, next slide, please. In quarter two, Chair, uh, we're still looking at the allocation of 131.8 million. Uh, we had spent 15.3 million, uh, 15.3 million of the 63.3 million allocated for compensation of employees, which amounts to 24% uh, of the allocated budget. Uh, on goods and services, 18.5 million spent uh, on 68.4 million. Uh, budget, which amounts to 27% spent on the allocated budget. Overall, for quarter two, 33.9 million spent on the 131.8 million, which amounts to 26% spent on the allocated budget. Next slide, please. Year year comparison chair, 6.8 million. Uh, on compensation of employees spent in the previous year compared to 15.3 million at the same time in the current year, with the, the variant, which shows a variance of 8.4 million and an improvement or movement of 133% um, on our spending. Goods and services, 7.1 million spent in the previous year. Uh, compared to 18.5 million spent in the current year, with a variance of 11.4 million, uh, which shows a movement of 159% uh, on our spending. Uh, just looking at the total chair, 14 million spent in the previous year compared to 33.9 million, uh, which shows a variance of 19.8 million, and shows a movement of 142 uh, percent. Um, the variance on the COE, the comment on the COE is still the same as the previous one. Uh, on the <coughs> goods and services, <coughs> there's improvement in spending of goods and services due to improve, improve spending patterns and increased <coughs> headcount. Next slide, please. <coughs> Just looking at, at quarter three, Chair. We had a spending of 23.5 million of the 63.3 million 
on compensation of employees, uh, which amounts to 37% of the allocated budget for compensation of employees. Goods and services, 17 million spent on the 68.4 million budget, uh, which shows 25% uh, spent on the allocated budget. Overall, 40.5 million spent on the 131.8 million budget, which was 31 percent uh, spent on the allocated budget. Next slide, please. Uh, your year on year comparison chair. <clears throat> 13, point, 13 million spent in in the previous year compared to 23 million spent 23.5 million spent in the current year on compensation of employees with a variance of 10.5 million uh, and shows a movement of 81 percent can we uh, conclude can we conclude all right next slide please um next slide all right, I, I think uh, just to talk to the quota and on quota comparison, just to show the, the improved spending on, on, on the OVG. On, on, in quota two, we saw an improvement of 19 million, uh, which shows a, a, a movement of 133%. And we saw 6.6 6 million uh, variance as well or increase in quarter three, which uh, amounts to 20% increase. Um, uh, thank you, Chair. Thank you, Ntatemu Loka and Ntatemu Tsone uh, for the presentation uh, on OVG. Can I invite uh, the ITB? Baumbuenya to uh, lead us in the presentation of the ITB. Chair, the chair. Uh, oh, yes, uh, Advocate Mugwengwe, I noted that uh, Umamu Ekunda wasn't coming through properly. Uh, please proceed now, you are audible. My apologies, Chairperson. I, I opened the camera instead of opening, the, I'm muting myself. Uh, thank you very much, Chairperson. And uh, I would like to take this opportunity to greet all the members of the Portfolio Committee uh, the, and uh, the CEOs and executives of all the entities of the department, the DG and the CEO and his executive of the ITB. Uh, today, we do not have the chairperson of the board, um, Mr. Nguenya. He has got um, family commitment. I think there's a, there's a funeral. Uh, he reported a funeral at home. So he's not available, but we will continue to do the presentation. The executive is here, the CFO of the department is here, the CEO is here, and other executive managers. So, Chair, I will just take this opportunity without further um, ado, give over to Mr. Mgwengwe to do the presentation. Thank you so much. Thank you, Chair. Um, Mr. Villagazi will just upload the presentation now. Chair, the, the, the presentation? Our presentation is arranged in such a manner that financial information starts first. So what we'll then do is just we'll just run through the financial information aspect of our presentation and finish that. And then I will, I will then come in on the non-financial performance information. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. 
Mr. Mgongwa, we can see the presentation. Sorry, ma'am. Um, good morning, good morning, honourable chairperson and honourable committee members. Thank you for the opportunity to present um, the quarterly reports for uh, the Ngonyama Trust Board for quarter one to quarter three. It's going to be a brief and quick presentation, Chair. Um, we, won't, we won't be long. Uh, in, in terms of... In terms of quarter one, Chairperson, I, I think the most important thing that um, the committee must be aware of is, is the revenue model um, of the Ngonyama Trust Board and where money predominantly comes from. Um, the, the board as a Schedule 3A entity is funded mainly from the fiscus and, and therefore um, it, the utilization of, of, of the grant for expenditure is um, is, is, is the source of its main funding and expenditure. Um, the other portion of the money comes from an administrative, if we could call it that for a lack of a better word, um, we could call it that, um, which comes from the 10% then that is uh, made from trust. So you'll see when we do the cumulative, it'll give you a sense of actually how much the trust has made, which has been able to be used uh, to fund um, board uh, activities. And we're using the word or the term board loosely and just referring to the Ngonyama Trust Board as an entity. Uh, so in, in quarter one, and you'll see that the revenue is quite in line uh, with what we had budgeted for. So you'll see that in quarter one, uh, we had budgeted for 5.8 million and we received 5.8 million from, from, from the department, uh, approximately 2 million, which would have been budgeted uh, from the trust. And we requested the 1.9 million or, or 2 million and, and, and received that. Um, however, there was a change because in the past, the, the, uh, in, in, in the past, the general way things were done was um, to supplement using complete trust funds, the entire shortfall. Um, and when we arrived um, about um, 11 months ago, uh, we perused through the legislation that was mandating the board to utilize some of these funds so that it was limited to 10% that, that required a change uh, in accounting policy in, basically in the way that things are done. Um, to ensure that there is no financial misconduct that happens for this particular an item. So you would have seen that <clears throat> initially there would have been a budget uh, for quarter one of 2.6 million that would have related to uh, more funds coming from um, from from the trust, which we have since cut, and any additional funds are no longer classified as direct revenue, but rather um, as a loan. And we have followed all the necessary procedures to request uh, the minister to allow the entity um, in lack of funding to actually get money from the trust and, and, and raise it as, as, as loans. Um, the gist or the cost drivers of expenditure in, in, in this particular entity are, are mainly board members' fees um, as accounting authority salaries and wages because it is a labor-intensive uh, organization, um, audit fees to an extent, and then just other general expenses. And those general expenses include utilities and um, water in, in the form of water and electricity, um, includes um, cleaning expenses include security expenses, telephone expenses, um, etc. Uh, what is important for the committee to note with regards to um, expenditure is the entity is underspending compared to the budget, uh, just because it's not very well financially resourced. Uh, so there are constantly austerity measures that are being put in place by the board to curb spending, which in, in, in effect will also have an impact of taking less and less money uh, for, for the trust, because those monies are governed by Treasury Regulation 14 in terms of how they must be accounted for. So what then eventually happens is in an, in an environment where you have an intention of, 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 of not sustaining deficits, um, you end up then sustaining deficits. And this is going to be the trend um, throughout the, the, the three quarters. I'm going to move Jefferson to the quarter two financial report, which um, the top part, which is the revenues, exactly indicative of the same situation that I uh, mentioned before, with only 120,000 being received from the trust as, uh, uh, as assistance. Uh, the rest of, of the monies are being spent, again, on those main categories that are cost drivers um, and explanations as to why we are, we, are, we are over in certain areas like board members' fees. Um, it's also quite important to note that during this quarter, uh, the CEO would have started and, and therefore there would have been a need to actually make sure that, and even in, in the third quarter, make sure that uh, some compliance matters are dealt with. 
place, and there would have been an increase in interaction with with, with the board and board members. Hence, um, the the increase from seven fifty to about one one million uh, salaries and wages stays a little bit on on par uh, because of financial statements that were due. Um, in, in May, which we then ultimately delayed, and we'll speak to this when I speak to the audit, audit, audit outcomes, um, we then requested over time for employees to be able to do some checks and balances in terms of preparing these financial statements. Um, therefore, um, the additional spending of 300,000 that was not anticipated. Um, audit fees are explained because of cash flow difficulties. And I think there was a parliamentary question that went out recently, Jefferson, uh, with regards to um, the, 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 the 30 days. Um, Treasury regulation 8.2.3 8 is only one invoice that we have kind of held back because of cash flow issues. And we've entered into a range, an arrangement with the Auditor General uh, because we simply just can't afford to pay their fees. Um, due to inadequate resourcing. Um, and then other general expenses are lower, again, due to austerity measures and the prevalence of COVID-19 still. The third quarter chairperson financial report revenue looks exactly this, the, the same uh, with just a little bit of interest income coming in uh, from money that would have been received through, through the bank. But again, the cost drivers remain predominantly the same. Uh, board members' fees that are, are higher by 329,000, salaries and wages that are higher by, by, by 1,1 million as a result of salary adjustments and back pays that were approved by, by the board, which had initially not been, been budgeted for, um, then audit fees were lower by 405,000 as a result of the delay in the Gonyama Trust audit, which is still running. Uh, Jefferson will also touch on, on, on that at, 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 at the end. And other general expenses um, also being lower due to the fact that we are quite aware of the fact that there's no funding uh, that is coming in the direction of this particular entity, um, and therefore we are forced to actually curb spending. The, the, the entity continues... Um, to incur insufficient or to incur deficits because of insufficient funding, um, Chairperson. There has been processes that have been embarked on to try and get uh, funding to flow in, in, in the direction, and it seems like they have they, they have failed due to whatever various reasons that have been uh, cited. In the year-to-date perspective, Chairperson, um, we have received all the money that would have been allocated by the fiscus so far. Um, we do, however, receive it in tranches because there were in the past issues with regards to compliance from. The the entities which have resolved and we're hoping that then um, the men in which this tranche this, tra this transfer payment is being paid in tranches will be resolved and we can be able to financially plan better um, by receiving our money up up front and being able to um, operationally be effective in, in, in that sense. Um, so already you get a sense that 10% of the transfer from Goyama Trust is about 4 million, which would mean that the revenue that would have been made by the trust for the period up to date uh, or year to date would have been 40 odd million. Then um, the expenditure, uh, we find ourselves slightly over in terms of spending, um, specifically more under salaries and wages and board members' fees, just generally because of the nature of the organization being labor, labor intensive. Um, that, that cuts the end of uh, the financial part of uh, the Ingonyama Trust Board presentation, Chairman. So I'm going to hand back to the Chief Executive Officer. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chair. Um, let's, let's, let's go to slide number five, um, which deals non-financial. Okay. Thank you, Chair. The, the, there's a relationship between this presentation and the last presentation that we made to the committee in, in, in November. Chair, I will recall that when you came before you in November, part of what uh, was glaring is that the Ngonyama Trust Board had not achieved any had only achieved one target um, in, in, in the financial year 2020-2021. So that kind of trend, it spilled into, into the first quarter of the, of, the, of the financial year. So the, in the first quarter of the financial year 2021-2022, there was literally no target achieved at all. It was zero. Uh, when we appeared before you in November, part of the commitment that we made was that 
the situation where there's no achievement of targets, where there's zero performance, was coming to an end. And um, what we'll then see is that um, in in let's move to quarter two. So in quarter one, there was there was there was, there was no achievement of anything. Then out of um, six targets in quarter two, only two were achieved. Um, but there was also, we had also targeted uh, the unqualified audit, audit opinion, which we, which then became inapplicable since the audit had not been finalized at that stage. So therefore, it was just two out of six uh, of indicators that we achieved. Um, can we move to quarter three? In 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 quarter three, what, what you what you see, which is what we had promised, was there is going to be progressive improvement, and that is what you you see. Quarter one, there's no achievement. Quarter two, there's two out of six. Then quarter three, there's four out of six. Uh, there's a mistake in the quarter three one chair in as far as it relates to the unqualified audit, audit opinion. We have said it is not applicable. It's it was actually in quarter three where it was achieved. Um, since we, we the, the 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 financial statements, the, the audit was only finalised in, in in October, and 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 then we received an unqualified audit opinion in October. So therefore, that was achieved. So which means we achieved four out of six indicators. Chair, that's how far I can go. We can take questions. Thank you. Masbulele uh, Advocate Mgwangwa, no Mamukunda for the ITP presentations. Honorable members, we will now open the sessions to questions of clarity. I will also at this juncture uh, want to hand over to Honorable Tab as uh, I'm going uh, for my prayers uh, to being it's Friday, it's time for Chuba for us. So, uh, Honorable Kabe. Thanks, Honorable Chair. Do you have any questions that you want to pose before you leave the platform? If I may uh, start with you. Not on my side, Honorable Chair, I'm covered. Thanks, Chair. Honorable Stay. Yes, thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Chairperson. Um, uh, yes, I, Chair, I would start with the ITB. The first question that I wanted to find about um, is the financial management of the ITB and the board. Um, could the ITB tell us if they have any plans of additional funding. I think one of the contentions issues that we had is that they have lease agreements. Um, we are aware of the court case that was happening um, and also other lease agreements with uh, other institutions. So if the ITB um, can maybe give us some clarity or hopefully in the next report on how they are going to solve the financial issues and that it's not always back to parliament or treasury to help them with funding of that. Um, if there was any discussion so far on that and in chairperson speaking about the court case, whether they um, have stopped issuing uh, leases to communities or if that, if that is ongoing. Um, then chairperson they, on the OVG, um, it is very concerning, Chair, that it seems like the OBG is not um, getting the house in order and that it's still taking such a long time for them to um, give uh, valuations to, to people. So can we just find out um, that when the OBG think they will have their timeframes for valuations, um, to be on on time or in in the period that they um, would like to get that. Thank you, Chair. It's all from my side. Thanks, Honourable Stein. Honourable Marshall. Honourable 
मैं मारो प्राइम मिनिस्टर कमिंग ऑनरेबल चे मैं मारो थैंक्स चे यू कैन कमिंग नो थैंक यू आई थॉट मे बी आई कैन बिफोर आई स्विच ऑफ स्क्वीजिंग व्हाट जस्ट केम टू थॉट and i uh, on both presentations uh, of uh, ovg and itv then i will uh, be able uh, to sign off after i've put uh, the questions honorable chair from our understanding honorable members uh, the functions of the ovg include regulation of valuations to ensure that there is compliance particularly with section 25 of uh, of the act especially as it relates to property value and just and equitable compensation our assessment therefore honorable members on the performance of the ovg should not be detached from the performance of land redistribution and restitution and what i mean by this for example in quarter 3 the cut the target to settle labor tenants was not met due to long negotiation processes i assume that it has to do with property values the following questions therefore honorable uh, chair arise uh, can the ovg explain in plain terms reasons for variation in slide 16 in particular it was unclear why they waited for the end of the year to report on all valuation requests if i understand the explanation correctly secondly what is the total number of valuations requests between quarter 1 and quarter 3 given the performance as shown in slide 17 what is the total number of outstanding valuations ie the backlogs valuation i have noted honorable members that slide 15 gives percentages but i'm actually interested in the actual mem- the numbers just to understand the workload as well as capacity constraints what is also the total number of valuations that have been completed but the property owners have not agreed in 2021 there were processes set in motion through the ministerial advisory panel to review the work of the ovg including that of the property valuations act can the dg in the dramasodi and the valuer general provide us with progress report on that process recently as early as the 11th of february 2022 honorable members the land claims court gave a judgment on land claims dispute involving the owners of uh, the farm jackals dan and moloto community the disputes related to the state offering the land owners less than market value for their land as a result of a revised valuation formula by the valuer general in august 2015 can the valuer general briefly explain the formula that the ovg uses in summary honorable members what does the court order say regarding property value as per the ovg formula and what implications does this order have on our interpretation of the meaning of just and equitable compensation as well as future valuations lastly honorable chair on the presentation uh, put uh, forward to the portfolio committee by ngonya mat trust i believe we need clarifications on the reasons for classification of grant to loan as reported if the presenters mentioned it 
it was not clear to me what were the concerns or the reasons for this change and what it means for accounting for the revenue or income. That's all on my end, Honorable Chair. I would uh, therefore take leave from now and leave the rest of the proceeding on your side. Thank you. Thanks, Honorable Mandela. Honorable Briet? Oh, I'm here, Chair. Thank oh. you. Then, Thank let's you. take Honorable Briet, then we'll come back to Honorable Mandela. All right. Thanks, Chairperson. Chairperson, I'll be quick. I think um, the the Chairperson and, um, and Honourable Stain have covered to a large extent. And uh, maybe from my side, just two questions to the OVG. Um, with regard to the interministerial advisory panel um, and taking into account um, uh, uh, their discussions with regard to the OVG's structure, um, what is the um, what is the progress that has been made in terms of the permanent structure um, of the OVG, taking into account you know the Property Valuation Act and and, and all of those things, um, and then chairperson maybe um, secondly. Um, taking into account fraud and corruption, um, what is the OVG doing? Um, what progress have they made in terms of putting mechanisms in place to ensure um, that um, they aren't, um, they don't have fraud and corruption within their in their own entity? Um, and I would leave it at that. Thanks, Chair. Thanks, Honourable Brief. Honourable Martha. Uh, thank you, Chair. Chairperson, I would like to take this opportunity through you to appreciate the, the, the report presented uh, by both entities and also to mention that uh, my chairperson has covered me in numbers of issues that I wanted to raise. Now my, 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 my few questions that I have will be directed to the OVG. The, in one of, the, pres, in one of the, the, the slide, it was presented that the evaluation process planned targets. Uh, there was an issue of six which were not achieved. Uh, one would like to, them to, to clarify as uh, why were they not achieved the, those six targets? And then the second one is on a uh, second quarter on fraud and corruption. Although one of my colleagues has already touched on it, but I, I want to add a rider on it. It was also mentioned in that uh, slide to say that the client was not found. Uh, we wanted to know what have you done as the OVG when the client, the client, the, the client was not found on that a fraud and corruption issue. What can you tell us? And on the issue of private evaluators, uh, we were informed that evaluation tracking system be adopted as the solution. Uh, when will this evaluation uh, uh, system, when, when, when will, will be this uh, evaluation tracking system be, uh, be, be, be effective? As they are saying, it is the best solution. Then the planned interventions for this, uh, all this that we have seen on the OVG, what is it that they are tracking, what is it that they are going to do? But also we wanted to check and understand the issue of uh, these private evaluators. Uh, is there any monitoring and evaluation of private evaluators? If it's yes, what is it that you are evaluating on them? What is it that you are, you are getting on monitoring? How do you monitor them? Because we are getting many issues with these private evaluators. Out there somewhere, they let people pay a certain amount of money direct to their offices, yet they're working with government on the other side. And this is going to be a bomb in the near future if we are not... Uh, taking into consideration the issue of monitoring and evaluation on their side. I know that it's a private company. They have their own policies, how they work. But they, they, the OVG must, on the other side, have their own monitoring and evaluation policy, which uh, 
and regulate these people and know what they're doing or what they're doing outside there. Thank you. Thanks, Honorable Marshall. Can we have Honorable Kappa? Uh, I'm not saying you said no, no question on my side. Thanks, Honorable Kappa. Honorable no, Member? I'm, I'm covered. Thank I'm you. Taking my register, is there any other Honorable Member that I might have skipped? Doesn't look like. Um, I have only two questions, one question for each entity. For OVG, I just want to share with this committee just three things that will take you as an entity to be a well-functioning, compliant entity that can achieve its target. So that is when we play oversight, we must just know and also help you in this regard. Do you have perhaps just three things that you could share with us that will help you to be a well-functioning, compliant entity that achieves its target? ITB, thanks and Adem Gwangwe for pushing to achieve those targets. We are mindful of the reforms of the past 11 months and uh, probably it will take us somewhere. But moving forward, uh, as Ndade Vilagazi has indicated that you only there for about 11 months, are there issues that you are targeting to improve ITB and also raise the confidence of this portfolio committee in terms of this? Entity. Thanks. Can I hand over to OVG to respond to those questions, including those that has been posed by Honorable Mandela and then ITB? OVG? Thanks, Chair. Um, the Active Value General, I asked that I, I start and she, she will come in where she uh, needs to. Um, the, the question on, on honorable, from, from Honorable Stay as to when we'll get to reducing our, our timelines. Um, I just need to maybe take you to slide, trying to find the slide, slide number 18, which is about taking uh, 50 days. If, if Honorable Stein takes a look at that slide. You'll see that in, in the first quarter, we achieved 50 days, um, and, and 50 days was our target and is our target. Uh, we achieved 42 days in quarter two and 28 days in quarter three. We are making progress insofar as, as, as the number of days is concerned. We are still not happy with, if you look at slide number 19, which is our backlog, where we, we wanted to, to have completed the web backlog by the end of the last calendar year, meaning 2021. We, we have not achieved it, but we're getting quite, quite close to it. So we, we think we are in a position where in, in the next year we ought to be able to, to be achieving all of our targets if one accepts that the trajectory and the trend shows quite significant improvements insofar as the amount of time that we take is concerned. Um, I happened to be sitting in when the um, portfolio committee met with the Chief Land Claims Commissioner last week and uh, members of the committee would have heard her uh, confirm the, the improvement in terms of delivery from the OVG to helping the, the commission in finalizing um, its, its claims. She, she has raised new issues and, and a question has been asked about the rejection of offers and, and, and I'll come to that when I, uh, when I, when I proceed. Um, Honorable Chairperson asked about reasons for variation in slide number 16. Um, 
In slide number 16, this is where we, we, we are explaining that we that that indicator says we must finish 100% of our valuations within the time that has been set and agreed with the client. And we are showing that in quarter one, we I think we did 58%, um, 38%, 48% in quarter two, and 58% in quarter three. Uh, the reasons for, for those uh, deviations, um, well, the, 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 the issue of the private valuers has been a problem and continues to be a problem. Um, but the number of valuations that are still in the hands of private valuers has reduced significantly. And when we enter 2022-2023, we'll be entering it in the main using internal resources from the, from the OVG. That is the, that is the reason of the why we were not able to get to to the to the one hundred percent. However, the explanation that we are giving around the, the TID and where we are saying, and I I think it addresses one of the questions of uh, Honourable Maso, uh, why we are not able to to count it in that quarter is because it, we are not allowed in terms of the technical indicator description. It's performance that we have got to pack and were able to report it at the end of the of the financial year because it did not take place in line with the with the rules of the technical indicator description, even though the work was uh, was was concluded. Um, in so far as uh, a question of the total number of requests, so um, in 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 quarter one. We, we did 121 backlog valuations. In quarter two, we, had, we did 143 quarter, uh, rather backlog valuations. In quarter three, we did 206 uh, backlog valuations. We had new referrals, which were from the, from the clients, 26 in Q1, 46 in Q2, and qu quarter three, uh, 64. And th those are the numbers. I hope it, it answers the questions that uh, Honorable Chairperson asked on, on this matter. Um, in the total completed, but uh, owners have rejected. So in quarter two, in quarter one, uh, we, we completed 15, in, in that is new referrals. In quarter two, we completed 21. And in quarter three, we completed uh, 2037. Um, and then the numbers that I gave earlier of the backlogs is Q1, 121, 143 in Q2, 206 in Q3. Now, the question of rejections, uh, this is something that we, we are raising with the commission that as the OVG, we don't have side of the rejections. So how the value chain works is that we issue a certificate, a provisional certificate to, to a landowner. They have 30 days to come back to us to say, we agree with what you are saying is the value, or we don't like what you are saying is the value. And these are the reasons, please, attend to these things. We consider them in terms of the Property Evaluation Act regulations, the reasons that they have given us. And then we make up our minds and we issue a final certificate to the, to the client. In this case, the commission or uh, Mr. Ndoves uh, unit, which is land um, redistribution and tenant reform. That, that's the last time we see or hear of the valuation certificate. We are therefore unable to say, was the, the number that the OVT gave accepted or was it rejected? Or for that matter, did the client make an offer that is exactly the same as what the OVT has determined to have been the value? Because at the moment we are doing value, we are not doing compensation. The clients do have a right invoking other legislation to, to use the, the, the valuation as a basis to get to a value. 
So we don't have that type of um, visibility, Chairperson. But in the in the ERP that we are now deploying, we have made it possible for our clients to give feedback online, rather on, on a virtual platform, um, on a digital platform rather, to, to give um, an indication of what became of the final uh, 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 certificate. So I am able to say uh, uh, which ones were accepted, which ones were, were rejected. It's only the commission and LRTR who can be able to, to, to give the committee that type of uh, information. Um, and Dr. Ramaso, DG, uh, DG will deal with the ministerial advisor panel. Uh, the judgment on, on, on Moloto. So indeed, in Chair, the Land Claims Court uh, came back, I think, two Fridays ago um, on the Moloto matter. And it is the first time that we kind of put the formula that the OVG uses to, to, to the test and, and judicial scrutiny. Um, the, the court has made a, has given us their, their judgment. And, and in their judgment, insofar as the formula is concerned, the judgment compared the formula to what has been done in the past. And one of the approaches that have been taken by the courts is the two-step approach, a two-stage approach, where a market value is determined and other factors that are listed as part of Section 25.3 of the Constitution and others that may not necessarily be listed are then considered to affect the market value, either by way of subtracting them. For instance, if the, it is found that uh, there has been a certain amount of state money that has been invested in that property, it may be an amount that gets subtracted from the market value. And then there are other factors that, that may affect the market value. So that is the approach in so far as the two stage is concerned. The court then said, with regards to the formula that the minister used, it is not inconsistent or irreconcilable with the two step approach. The court further said that that formula that the OVG uses, which the minister used in the Molotto case, is not. Uh, in violation of any authority or any any laws. So you would find that there was quite a criticism that determining current use value is, is not necessarily what was provided for when current use was mentioned in Section 25.3 of the Constitution. Now the courts have actually said value in use or current use value can be quantified and it is not inconsistent in, with any laws or does it offend any, any authorities. Um, so what, what are the, the, the implications? Uh, the implications uh, may be that uh, the OVG is, in, if one just looks at that particular judgment alone, independent of any other issues, uh, may, may proceed to, to utilize the, the that, that, that formula. Um, Honorable Briet, uh, it, it's also got to do with the ministerial advisor panel, which is for the for the DG. On, on the fraud and corruption initiatives, we are uh, running workshops with, with our clients and with our with our internal staff. Even yesterday, we were having one such session with internal staff. We are launching a hotline for fraud and corruption um, in, 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 in due course. I, I do know that the I, ICT colleagues were busy setting up uh, the technical side of the, of the hotline, and uh, we, we will be launching it and, and kind of putting it up on our website to see what our hotline will be. Um, in so far as uh, Honorable Maslow is concerned, uh, 
the issue of fraud and corruption, why were clients not available? Uh, on our own, so this one, I, I suppose it's a matter of, of diaries. I know that our senior manager, Pio Moon, that the muscling is, is busy with the clients and we are getting them to, to come on board in so far as those workshops are concerned that we, we are doing. Uh, in so far as the private valuers are concerned, yes, the valuation tracking system has been switched on. It, it has gone online, I think, in January in the in the OVG, and it gives us much better visibility of what the issues are with the private valuers. Uh, in so far as how we monitor them, we 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 are limited to monitoring them in terms of our you know contract. Uh, uh, deliverables, so timelines, uh, quality of work. Uh, at the end of their work, we are able to say whether we have received the correct quality as we had expected, and we are able to comment on the timelines. Um, in so far as issues that you are hinting at of of uh, malfeasance, the there's the South African Council for the Property Valuers Profession that is um, that takes. Um, care of looking after the ethics as well of, of property valuers because they are professionally registered. Uh, where we may receive um, information of that type of behavior would be able to, to contact the SACPVP and also internally be able to say at the OVG whether uh, such a service provider, because in any case there are service provider in terms of supply chain management, whether we should be able to take any action against them. Um, Honorable Tabe, yeah, it, it's a, a difficult question. The three things that will help us as the OVG to function. Um, I think the first one is, is our digital maturity. Um, the, the OVG needs to get to a point where it is relying on digital platforms because of the safety, the accuracy of information, and the ease of doing work. One of the major problems in the initial stages at the OVG would be debates between the OVG and its clients about the whereabouts of instructions and the difficulty within the OVG itself to determine the whereabouts of, a, of an instruction. So as we continue to mature digitally, I think we'll work better. The VTS that we have now uh, started using since it's about January is already showing improvement in how we're able to account for the stage at which evaluation is at. Um, we are planning to do um, enterprise architecture that is going to encompass uh, the issue of digital maturity as well. And that roadmap, once implemented, we will see a progressive improvement in so far as our work is concerned. I think also we, we need a stability of operations in the in the OVG. And we are working quite closely with DITS to manage the transition between um, the systems that uh, this was using to the systems that the OVG will be using as, as we are busy implementing and uh, going live effectively from the 1st of April 2022. To me, that, that stability of operations will, 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 will lead to the OVG doing much better insofar as um, uh, improves its efficiencies is concerned. One of the things that is going to be key is that the OVG is going to be able to look at historical work that it has done uh, in terms of valuations and, and be able to, to capture trends, um, to, to, to analyze what we are doing in specific corridors in terms of how we value properties um, per hectare in, in, a, in a particular, uh, let's say, district and be able to say whether indeed this is the type of, of, of trend that should be maintained um, and inform also uh, predictability of the work of the, of the OVG. So as we, we, we retain more and more data, more and more analytics are going to come out of that type of data and those analytics will inform the intelligence that the OVG will, will, will 
embed in its in its processes, particularly on 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 valuations. Chair, I think I should stop there and and allow Tatramaso uh, to deal with the questions that were posed to him, and maybe the DVG as well. Thank you. Thanks, Tatramaso. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Chair. Um, the the issue relating to the engagements that we are having um, on the ministerial uh, panel on the review of Property Valuation Act, um, I would like to report to this committee that the report has been concluded, Chair. Um, it's only awaiting a consultation with the minister. Um, we were supposed to engage yesterday, however, due to other pressing matters, the minister could not meet with us. But we, we, we are working towards um, the, the first week of March to ensure that the recommendations that come from the team would then be uh, shared very widely um, uh, by the minister uh, after the, the, the work that is currently being, uh, being done. I think I, I should say that there has been a lot of work that was done by the team, uh, Honorable Chair, um, taking into consideration the areas that were uh, outlined from the uh, 2014 engagements um, on, 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 on the TVA uh, being the act and how the issues were, were raised around the three critical areas uh, covered by the bill. The recommendations um, respond to the issues that were identified in terms of the terms of reference and also additional work that was done by this uh, team that was there um, that did uh, quite a lot of work um, on, the, on the PVA and its regulations and therefore the recommendations would be ready for that. Chairperson, I would like to defer. There were issues that were asked about the, the land reform space which I would request that we we submit a formal written response on um, as they uh, range quite uh, broadly on the issues between the LRTR and the OVG. Thank you very much, Chair. Thanks, Dr. Ramasodi. Uh, permission is granted. Um, can we then go to ITB? Uh, thank, thank you, Chairperson. Um, I'm going to answer just the very last question. And then the other, I think it's only three other questions. The CEO and the CFO will respond to those questions, Chairperson. Uh, the last question was, uh, what is the ITP doing to improve the confidence of the, to gain the, conf the confidence of the portfolio committee on the functioning of the ITP? Uh, that's the question that I want to respond to, Chair, by saying that, uh, uh, there's a lot that we're doing because the um, effectiveness of our organization is mostly dependent on the very basics of the basics of organizational management being in place. So what we are doing is we are designing an appropriate operating model that will be followed by an organogram. And we are developing systems as well in all areas of operation in your human resources space, your finance space, and your land tenure associated with the SOPs that will enable that the, the, the staff will operate knowingly, knowing, following those procedures and processes in, in a, that would have been um, approved by the board. More importantly, we are stream, streamlining the operations in ensuring the separation of those providing the oversight and those that are responsible for execution. That's a very important demarcation there because it talks to the governance of the organization and a way of introducing some kind of culture change, instilling a culture of accountability. So with those systems being in place, I am confident that the operations, as you might have noticed, of the organization will drastically improve and the organization will definitely be able to operate and deliver on its mandate uh, because this system will ensure that there's there's a, a constant monitoring of the performance where deviation are noticed, then there could be remedial 
measures that are taken on time. So that's 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 all chairperson that I would want to respond to. Then I can hand over to the CEO and the CFO to respond to the other, I think two other questions. Thank you. Thanks, Madam. In that order, CEO, CFO. Thank you, Chair. Um, let me let me deal with the question of honorable stain. Are you able to hear me, Chair? Yes, you are audible. Thank you yes, so much. Sir. Thank you so much. With respect to the question from Honorable Stain Chair, we, we had come before the committee in the past. Part of what we had reported is that the ITP has got two sources of revenue. That is what it funds and 10% and, 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 and from revenue as provided by the, the financial regulations. But that is obviously not enough. So the ITP had then taken a decision to establish an entity that would then operate in the commercial space with a view to generate more revenue that will then enable the trust to discharge its mandate towards trust beneficiaries. So a lot of work at the present moment is focusing on that because in terms of the legislation, we our revenue can only come from these two sources. So, 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 so we're working towards ensuring the viability of Ingonyama Holdings, um, so that then revenue could come our way, so that we are then able to discharge our obligation in relation to to, to IT beneficiaries. Uh, with respect to the um, residential leases, chair. I do confirm that we have ceased entering into residential leases with trust beneficiaries or with, with, with anybody for that matter on trust land. That has stopped. Um, then on, on the issue uh, of the classification of, 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 of of finances, whether they are income or loan, uh, in as far as they've been taken from the trust, that is what the CFO is going, is, is going to is going to respond to. Um, I would have had some answers on the last question, but Dr. Klunda has covered them, so I will stop here, Chair. Um, if, I could, if I could jump in here, Chair, thank you. Um, may, maybe as a side note to assist, the, 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 this, the, there seems to be a growing need, um, maybe for, let's call it an education session, Chair, to bring the committee up to speed uh, on how the Ingonyama Trust Board and Ingonyama Trust works. Um, it's a little bit of a tricky business model that requires a little bit of a study. And I think it would be beneficial to go through that process, specifically with just the separation of the two um, and, 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 and the link between the two. Um, and I, I see that most of the questions that come from honorable members are centered around that understanding. Um, so, so, so maybe just to, to, to also add on to what the CEO is saying with regards to honorable Stain's question of of financial management and and whether there's a plan. We, and context here, I think, becomes important and understanding of the fact that Ngonyama Trust Board is a Schedule 3 a entity um, and the funding office CEO is saying is a responsibility uh, of, of, of the fiscal or of government in, in, in general. It, it just so happens that there is or the creation of the board was on the strength of an existence of a trust and therefore it would have made sense for if administration is being done on behalf of someone else for that someone else else to then, you know, pay something. And that was then crafted in the financial regulations to the Guazul Ngonyama Trust Act um, and was limited to 10%. Uh, it, it also has an impact of what Honorable Ngosiago Mandela was saying, or the, these questions I'll, which I'll, I'll, I'll touch on later. So, so the, the answer then 
in, in all efforts that are being done, the honest answer is there is nowhere else to go to, to look for funding for Ngonyama Transport. There, there, there is no other model that can be written for, for Schedule 3A entities because there is one that exists already and it's a responsibility of government to actually fund this particular entity. That's why, if you remember, Chair, in my last meeting, um, there, there was a statement that was made and I said I'm a little bit disheartened uh, when members are saying that they don't care whether entities are funded properly to be able to execute government ob objectives, and that's where I was coming from. When it comes to trust funds, and the leases, as Honorable Stain is, is referring to, those are all trust monies, and we all know trust monies uh, are, are governed by Treasury Regulation 14. Um, so there is a general expectation, even from the department side, that trust monies must just be used. Uh, it, it, it's not how it's, it's, it's meant to be done. Uh, so as a result, we keep on coming back and begging and begging because we are trying to run away from committing financial misconduct. Because the moment we take more than the 10% that is allowable, we are then disadvantaging the people that we are meant to be ensuring social benefit to on the on the ground, which really hasn't been happening over the years and we're trying to, to correct that. So the plan that we had with regards to resourcing and funding um, the Ngonyama Trust Board, and I think also the context of the fact that I'm a seconded CFO by, by the minister, and I was seconded from the 1st of May, uh, to try and, and remedy some of the situations that were, 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 were in the Ngonyama Trust Board. So, so I started on the 1st of May to assist in, in fixing that. And one of the reports that I would have wrote, I clearly highlighted that the root cause of, of the inefficiencies or the ineffectiveness of, of the organization was lack of funding, which was kind of left to its own vices over the years, even though the organization might have evolved as everything evolves. There was never really an evolution in terms of oversight from the department, and there was no evolution in terms of um, resourcing through employees or HR matters and even financial financial matters, um, which then results in effective management. So I, I think here yeah, it, it does become an issue of fairness. I think it, it does become fair to then ask the department um, to give this response as to uh, what is the plan of, 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 of funding as they, they hold the budget. Um, because we, we, we have asked, Quite, quite, quite a bit, and their inability to effectively consider our funding requests due to certain influences has then brought us brought us brought us here. So we will keep on begging, um, the chairperson, uh, and, and until we are heard. Because while we are here at the ITB, we cannot then support financial misconduct uh, through using of trust funds because that is what it, it amounts to or is tantamount to. So um, my, my proposal is that the chair allows the DG to respond to to that process and how it actually failed um, in, in terms of bringing about funding to 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 to, to this place. With regards to the question that was asked by Ingo. Um, in terms of classification of grant and loans and what it means for accounting. Because you are looking at two separate legal entities, one that is created by the Public Finance Management Act as a result of another, so it becomes a Schedule 3A entity, you're looking at a statutory trust. Uh, the transactions are quite separate, and we've written to the Accountant General, and she's eventually, she, well, not eventually, but she agreed with us on the first item, though she took a long time to get to the to, to, to respond. In accounting, liability is created in two ways, Chair. You create it either legally uh, by having a legal obligation to settle or to deliver cash or to perform a service, or it is constructively created. So when we tell employees we're going to give you performance bonuses, we are creating an, an, a constructive obligation. Now, financial regulations of the trust um, allows up to 10% of trust monies to be used for administration of the board, which is a 3A entity. If the trust gives more than 10% um, or gives anything in excess of the 10%, it then becomes not in line with legislation, which means it can't be treated as income because income is defined um, in the Wazulu Ngonyama Trust Act regulations and is limited to that 10%. So meaning anything above 10% can't be classified as income. So the other side of credit, there's only two credits in accounting. It's either you are, it's income or it's either liability. So the only other side that is available is the liability. And when we test it against the definitions, it actually does meet the definition because in law you're only allowed to up to 10 percent and suddenly you, you 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 are taking more so the, the effect then is you 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 will then recognize which is what is being seen in a cumulative figure of four million 
translating as 10% of 40 million. Um, and anything in excess will then be owed. But obviously, there would need to be certain resolutions that say, okay, we are allowing trust monies to be utilized for, um, for, for some activities because of circumstances, and therefore, they will need to be repaid as opposed to classifying them as revenue because that is financial misconduct. Um, we, we have taken the issue up with National Treasury when it comes to the treatment of land, and I'm hoping that at a later stage when we find finalize the Ingonyama Trust Audit and we bring it to the committee, we will be able to unpack a lot of these things. And I think a lot of sense will start uh, being made in terms of what these organizations are. Um, so the Accountant General agrees with us in the treatment of land and revenues, so including this particular treatment. Um, and, 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 and I think it's important here to say that the, this is all being done in an effort to actually deal with uh, what has been happening in the past, including uh, utilization of, 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 of trust monies for, for, for funding, for funding the, the, the trust. Thank you, Chairperson. Sorry, for funding the board. Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you, CFO. Uh, Dr. Musodi, I don't know if you have anything to round up the response from ITB. Then I said when you respond, where I said the confidence of this committee, CFO was on your presentation and we will await this um, audit because you requested a certain amount of money and you were given the exact money and you having because of your issues restrictions that we are putting in place that goes with understanding. But then uh, Dr. Ramasodi, as and when we are looking forward to an improved ITB, any responses that might be left out? Is the DJ still with us? If not, honorable members, I think we have come to the end of uh, today's presentations. Let me um, thank the entities, the DG. Sorry, Chairperson. Yes, ma. I'm so sorry to do this to you. Can I just ask a last question and maybe request the ITB to give it to us in writing because we have been trying to get answers no on problem. this issue. Okay, thank you, Chairperson. If I can just find out, Chair, whether, uh, what is the number of residential leases that were affected by the court order, the implementation plan for the order, because we have now received a long explanation about why the ITB uh, board or the trust needs more funding. Um, Chair, but I'm concerned that we are not seeing much regarding implementation and assistance to the people living on the land. So if we can get the number of residential leases affected by the court order, the implementation plan for the order, the total cost of the needed to re reimburse those affected and then how the ITB will in secure a uh, 10 year security for the informal light, uh, land rights holders on that land. Chairperson, maybe if they can provide that to us in writing, because it might be difficult for them to give the answers now. Um, uh, I, I won't make more comments about the more funding at the moment because we need to discuss this. Thank you, Chair. Thanks, Honorable State. That will be something they're taking also out of this meeting to be submitted in writing, including those that uh, DG has promised. The OVG also, if they could uh, also send in writing the report on the court order and its implications. Having said that, Honorable Members, let me thank all the participants, my colleagues, the entities and the department on today's uh, presentations. This meeting stands adjourned. Wishing you a blessed weekend all. Thank you.
Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chair and colleagues. Have a wonderful weekend. Recording stopped.